You was waiting on me? Of course. I was waiting on you. <laughs> of course. Of course I was waiting on you. Well, I'm here. Welcome. What I'm welcome for? What am I thanking you for? Thanks for stopping by. Oh. We appreciate you. Baby. For taking the time out of your busy schedule to holler at us. Bang, bang. And it's, is this petty tea? Mm. Is, is it? Is she petty tea right now? Mm. I believe so. No. I believe so. No. I believe so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say yes. Let me go ahead and like the show. No. Go ahead and give us a thumbs up. If you come into this space, go ahead and give us give us a like just for showing up. Bang bang. Is that what you want? You, you need a nap? No. I have a few in the back. You got your kitchen is active. <laughs> the kitchen is active. It is. The kitchen is active. It's like grease. It's fine. Mm -hmm. My my kitchen is fine. What's that? All I gotta do is brush it. We good over here. We chillaxing. Are you? You look mm -hmm. sleepy. Did you have a snack while you was um out? I had some cereal. During the break. I had some cereal. Oh, I got my fruit. I was having fruit myself. I was running around. And I was like, I'm having technical difficulties. I was like, can't get right in this little break time. My shirt had something on it. I was like, this shirt ain't clean. I need this in my thing. Can't find, I don't have no earrings on. It was a mess for that little quick minute. I was trying you to had a whole hour. It really wasn't a whole hour. Because I have to prepare for the show, all type of stuff. It, I wasn't ready. Sorry, wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. I, you act like I care. You act like I care. You act like I care about how you really feel about what I'm talking about. I'm just sharing. Ain't this a safe space? We all have those times. Where it's just like, but I'm here. Got my purple classic women in Linux shirt on. Why do you have on those pearls? These are not pearls, dear. Mm -hmm. This is a silver, sterling silver beaded chain. These are not pearls. But if they look like pearls, I'm a classy base girl. Real classy. No, you're not. You're not classy base. I'm real. I'm a real classy base bra. Classy. We have to remove people from the show when they're starting with their lies early in the show. This is not this is what you are so dis. This is this is a safe. You are space. so. Dis this is a safe space. And, and not I did not put on lipstick for these shenanigans. This Again, it's so disrespectful. <laughs> it's so disrespectful. Gosh. <sighs> <laughs> All right. All right. At least don't be laughing. That shit ain't funny. <laughs> I see. She finna start. This is why you gotta go ahead and remove. Cause she finna start. She finna wind up. Wind your bumper, girl. You are you calm yet? Can we bring you back up? Are you calm? Let's try. Okay, she's calm. Good. So, did you enjoy the last show? Just type in the chat. You don't have to say it out loud, D. Just type in the chat if you enjoyed the last show or not. You you don't have to speak. Let me let me look up um let me look up sign language. Hold on. Hold on. Enjoy in sign language. Okay. 
So enjoy in sign language is this. If you could just do that, if you do that, that's enjoy. We're, we're working on, on, on using our expressions. All right. Did you, did you, so let's try it again, D. D, get close up on you, get close up on you, D. Did you enjoy the last show? Yeah, are you, I, I don't know, is this, uh, I don't know, are you affiliating with a gang here? We can't do gang violence here. Hey everybody, welcome to Women in Linux. I am Tam and D is in the background. And we just wanna share with you uh, some of the perks of being here on our channel. All right, so first things first, if you wanna connect with us on social media, connect with us anywhere on social media at Women in Linux. If that's just too much for you, you can always come and find us on womeninlinux.org. And if that's not enough, we have even more perks where you can hit the connect button. Once you hit connect button, it'll, you put your email address in here. And once you put your email address in here, it'll connect with us uh, in our Slack group. We have tons of resources in our Slack group. Uh, people looking for jobs, people just looking for advice, people looking for information and so forth, right? So again, this is Slack, it's not Discord. So on with, with using Slack, it I warn you, it is resource heavy. So you may need to use either the web browser or if you're on your phone, you should be fine. But if you're on your desktop and we know most of you connect on your computer, it's easier to open it up in your web browser so it doesn't take up so much memory or so many processes and so forth. That's just an FYI. That's how I use it. Okay. And if you would like to shop with us, we still have our stuff from uh, our five-year stuff. Um, so on a shop and you want to get some merch, feel free to come here and get some merch. Again, if you come over here and click on all products, you'll see on all the products that we have from hoodies um, to masks and so forth and so on, right? And if that isn't good enough for you, you can donate. You can always donate with your time. Um, you can donate with your money. So how do you donate with your time? You donate with your time by saying, hey, I would like to do a presentation or I like to volunteer on helping us uh, grow the channel. You retweet, um, you share this with other members. In fact, for those of you that come here every single week, we know you come here every single week and you don't subscribe, subscribe. That helps us grow the channel. That helps us get more content to you. Hey, research isn't easy. I'm not getting paid to do research. I wish it was at a university, but hey, I'm bringing this to you, right? I'm bringing this to you and us and for others, right? So if that doesn't work, you can always donate on PayPal by clicking the donate button. Uh, once you hit the donate button, you have your own denominations in which you can donate. And if that doesn't work to you, for you, you can always reach out to D and you can cut a check and send a check. That works for us as well. All right. So what are some other things that we actually do have as well? Right. So we have a discount uh, with IT Pro TV. You get 30 percent off. Um, I've I've used IT Pro TV myself. I've done interviews with them. I'll pull those up as well, too. But as you can see, I'm logging into IT Pro TV. What are the benefits here? You need to learn how you learn. So one of the things you can do in IT Pro TV, you can come over here, you can click on courses and it gives you a list of courses that separate them out by certification and also set, set, separate them out by learning paths. You're like, Tamika, what does that mean? My four basic principles or my four basic foundations of skill sets that you should have is Linux. Uh, you should also have an automation tool, whether it's Terraform or Ansible. You should know at least a cloud. I don't care. Pick pick either one. And finally, last but not least, security. And security comes in multiple forms. Security of the operating system, security of the application, and also security of the of containers, right? And cloud security. So it's multiple facets when we're talking about security. Those are your four basics that you're going to need to, to get you a job and then move you up. All right. And we're going to talk about our membership here in another video, but I just want to get this out to you. All right. So that's 30% off off of 
uh, IT Pro TV. And last but not least, our cal Calendly, we have a mem we have um, set up for our Calendly. Let me pull that up. I think I have it saved in my browser here, so I can just go straight to it. Uh, if not, I'll get it from D here. Here we go, right here. All right, so with Calendly, we have one-on-one -on -one sessions. That's where you get to talk to either me or D one-on-one -on -one session, right? Um, interview prep. Some of you are getting ready for interviews or you're never interviewed before. We want to prep you for an interview. Resume review. Let's go over what you have or let's pull all your skills together. Let's get things formatted properly. Let's get everything going. And last but not least, career assessment. What is your journey? What could it look like? What could you be going through? What are your next steps? Some of you are transitioning. Some of you are not. Some of you are looking to transition. And some of you are just trying to figure out what is your next step. So by saying all of this, we want you to enjoy your time here at Women in Linux. And also, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the share button. And last but not least, last but not least, thank yourself that you actually did it. All right. That's all I have to say for you today. And goodbye. Nug, if you buck. Thank you. And welcome back. And welcome back. What's up, D? What's up? Meet me outside, D. Meet me outside, D. Over, over there, that's Cam. And we're back. Meet me outside. Thank you for coming back. Hope you guys caught the first show. Text and Jobs was great. I think it was a petty tea moment all the way through, but definitely good information. If you call it, it turned out with lazy investing. Uh, I don't know. Dare you say it was a petty tea moment? It's all always a uh, a good time here. Always. How dare you say it was a petty tea moment all the way through? It was not. So you know, how was it we a petty tea moment? How was it a petty tea moment all the way through? I'm asking a question. Hey, I'm asking you a question. Hey, Can you answer the question? Hey, Tim. You're not answering the question. I just want to know. How are you today, Tamika? I'm awesome. But so how was it a petty tea moment all the way through? How are you doing today? Can you answer the question? I think you are displaying. No, well, you said on the first on the first show you thought it was a petty tea moment all the way through. Even when I was calculating the numbers for it that you could have for investing. At forty k, I mean, you know, not the petty t all the way through, but you know, you was dropping, you was dropping some stuff, and it, it, and ultimately, even the calculator is about like you better calculate these funds for you be washing up at the cemetery at the spigot, like for you be like, washing up under the sea. Wish I could be. I'm just saying. I think those are two different songs, but I'm gonna let you live for that. I'm gonna let you run with it because under the sea. And part of this world are two different songs. Yes, I know that. Sir Octavius of Williamsburg. <laughs> I saw that you updated your profile name and I hollered. I slid out of my chair when I saw it. I saw it. But you yeah, to, it was definitely to, some great info. You have to address him accordingly. Sir Octavius of Williamsburg has entered the chat. That's how you have to do it. Give everybody give a round of applause for Sir Octavius of Williamsburg. He has entered the chat. I have to give a round of applause. He came from very far, from Lansom from afar. Now we just need to get Sir Octavius with one of them white wigs on. Like they had Put some powder in his dreads. Huh? <laughs> powder in his dreads. Sir Artavius of Williamsburg has entered the chat. An absolute best. No. Um, so what we got going on? Did you answer my question about what we doing with uh, the one-on-ones for next week? I did answer your question. I didn't see that. That had to be in the evening. I have to be in the evening. Okay. Well, I think I'm taking day shift next week. Yes. Oh, <laughs> you know what? I don't. Well, I don't know what I'm gonna do. You know, Juneteenth is a holiday Monday. It is a federal holiday. All right. 
this is actually a real thing. Do all companies honor it? Or is it like one of the ones? It's a federal holiday. Mm. They don't have a choice. Like, oh my well, calendar, it, it tomorrow, is a not option. Huh? It's my Father's Day. You know what? I don't keep up. Yeah, with tomorrow that. is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to those folks. For the baby daddies and the daddy daddies and <laughs> the granddaddy daddies and the uncle daddies. Uncle daddies. Uncle daddies. Like they say, like right now we're at that age where we can date your son and you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be telling her business. <laughs> we're at the age where we can date the son or you. <laughs> or the daddy. I got guidelines though. I got guidelines. I don't date younger than my brother, even though that might change. And I don't date older than my dad. That's my thing. I can't can't do it. And if you and if an older gentleman look older than my father, and he has been aging quite nicely, ain't gonna work for me. Unless I catch one of those um with Anna Nicole's, then I might have another change of heart. But other than that, that's it, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, my dad has passed on, so I don't have that age restriction. But then I don't. Like we got that. a problem with John. Or you? Or you must have a lag, John. We we don't have no problems, girl. We don't have no problems. And then I and then, the I, and then the and then and then and then I I don't have I don't really have a restriction on younger self. Maybe like I'm not dating a 21 year old. I'm not. From my archives, you like he's grown. He is grown. He's you don't even go, you, you, do, you do not go to jail for dating a 21 year old. Granville, you know, it's some tender morsels out here. You know. Look, how, how let me let me tell you something. Arthritis calculations. Listen, listen, arthritis and heart disease. Bad backs don't have an age. <laughs> Bad knees, they don't have an age. Oh, he got up there. He is 34, Joan. He is 34. And my dad is 60. He'll be 68. But but they usually like him like 75. 70 to 75. Really? When is the last? When is the last seventy seventy five year old I I had on my on the hook? She like him like seventy seventy five. Yeah, that's not mature. That's elderly. <laughs> is that it's, elderly? It's Girl, mature. I not a CNA. I do not have that type of training. Mm -mm. It is mature, no, ma'am. But listen, we live in Florida, listen, so listen, those 70, listen. 75 year olds they are eating vegetables and fruit. They is killing the game. I stay away from them. Granville, tell my Tam, I'm your tenderoni. You see, Granville, mm -hmm. tell my Tam, I'm your tenderoni. Police ain't dating Bill Murray. You don't think so? No, they working on a project together. And if she mm -hmm. was, that's her business. But even if she was, I mean, she, she was like, look, he butt up out of here. <laughs> and I don't need that. Shoot. That's her business. Hey, I ain't mad at her. Go get, go get into the trust fund. Go get into the trust, into the estate. I ain't mad. I did the show yesterday. Remember what I did the show yesterday? They said older women um are, are going are gonna have excessive cash because the men well, are dying the big wealth transfer <laughs> yeah the, the men are dying the and, men are and dying. we are not being funny when we say when the husbands kick the bucket it is a statistical fact that a, it, is, women, it is it is a testicle fact <laughs> that women outlive men 
by a whole number of reasons. So that's why we tell our men out there that you got to be more careful. You got to create you some quality relationships. You got to go to the doctor. You got to do all of the pre stuff, preventative maintenance on your body, your mind, body, and soul, because they, those are, are factors in you living a long and healthy and wealthy life. Because health is wealth. Or, or else you're going to, uh, like, uh, uh, don't be out there eating bad food. You know, like if you up there, go on, check your cholesterols and your prostates and yep. your, your T's and your D's and your C's. And if you got something on your mind, you better tell somebody or go see somebody and talk about it. Like I said, you need to check on your close friends, check on your strong friends. When is the last time you called your homeboy? Or somebody that you consider that's close to you, that's your friend. When is the last time y'all had a real conversation? Same like, for the women. Whew. Ain't no cap. Same for the women. It's, it's not exempt. However, because we live longer, those are just some of the things that we just be like, ooh, let's go check on that. Every time I go to a doctor's appointment, they like, that is, you're not scared. Hey, hey, based on yeah. the history, I need to check this out first. Go and check that yeah. out. Do you have something else streaming in the back? Because it, it's it's breaking up on you sometimes. And no, I don't know I if don't it's have you. Anything streaming oh, yeah. I, have, I have the YouTube page up. But I don't know. It might be my connection. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You, is, this, is the TV on streaming anything? No, it is silence in here. There's I mean, nothing. We know it's silence, but I mean, but it's but not streaming. It, no, everything is off. Okay. Just checking. Know, just trying to check. No, nothing. Just, nothing should be trying. Uh, just trying to conserve bandwidth. No, I. Can, but you know what? The TV in the living room might be on, but it's like on pause. Nothing is like playing on that TV. Um, good. I'm glad I don't you know why you see the doctor every three months. Why you see the doctor every three months? And which doctor is it? The same doctor every three months? They may be checking some medical stuff out though. Oh, that's Man, a lot. That's a lot. I don't know, but hey, I don't want to be. That's your business. I'm not about to be in it. Maybe you have a job that requires you to go every three months. Yeah. I, uh, I think a truck driver. I'm not sure what the rule is of, of the truck drivers. Hey, hey I got some friends that truck going drivers. on with your stuff. That is a good thing. Uh, what else? What else? What else is going on in the chat? What are y'all up to? What y'all got going on? What is that? A lot of we, we, a lot of you, we don't see on Wednesday, so it's a treat when you guys show up. We had I haven't seen Joan in a while. Granville, it's been a minute. A Queen you know, Lee, Joan, you know, Joan be disappearing. Joan and the Queen Lee, they be disappearing. Crystal. I missed you. You know, to last, Crystal, the week before last. Crystal suspect. The Crystal suspect. Girl, Crystal wasn't ready to hang. Girl, I was on a mission. I'm glad I spared you that, Crystal. Yet, I didn't want to eat. You wasn't ready. She wasn't in town. She still wasn't ready. What else? Mm, who else? Are you ready to get into it? Are you ready, D? I I'm all, I stay ready, so I don't have to get ready. Mm. You ain't gonna knock a butt. Oh God! Tamika is a poop bag. She ain't gonna bust a grape in the fruit bowl. What are we talking about? What is the topic? Twenty-five of the highest paying Linux administrator jobs in twenty twenty-three. The best Linux admin jobs can pay up to $175,000 per year or more. Facts. All right. So, Linux administration. Make that bigger mm -hmm. for us, to be. Don't shush me. We in this together, my G. Uh, hey. Don't shush me. Hey. Don't shush me. Hey. Don't shush hey. me. Don't shush me. I didn't put on this lipstick for nothing. So 
um, the Linux administrator's jobs can pay up to one hundred and seventy-five thousand per year, right? And the uh, and the and the more is depending on other other skills that you regain and so forth, right? So let's go here. Did you come back? Are you back? Then look, this is when she started acting like she frozen. <laughs> anyway, a lens administrator is both an IT professional and a people manager. Administrators uh, oversee their team. And this is probably lead administrators that oversee their team and ensure that everyone is on task and and protect uh pro project is progressing on schedule and the project is progressing on schedule linux administrators may train other team members and leaders they monitor server or servers ensuring that it's healthy they do this by conducting regular backups administering patches and when needed Becoming a Linux admin requires it ed, requires education and experience. First, you need a degree. That's not true. You don't need a degree to be a Linux administrator. You can just be a you can take a class and be a Linux administrator. But will the degree help you? Absolutely. The degree will help you. The next step is to gain solid working knowledge of servers running Linux by working under an experienced Linux administrator or you start getting uh, getting your your RHCSA, your LPIC, uh, or your Linux Plus, and then start working in like something like uh, I would start out with somebody like Rackspace or um, uh, uh, Gator. What's it? Host Gator, um, or GoDaddy, or something like that. That's what I would do. You know, Mashana, don't. Yeah, if you if if anything, if any degree, I would tell anybody to get that's coming up. Tell them to get a computer engineering degree, and I'm not sure about a cyber security degree because I don't know what they do in those cyber security degrees. It's fairly new, and each school is different, so I wouldn't I wouldn't push that. But most definitely, computer engineering. Uh, you may change companies a few times continue, to continue your learning process. You can pursue various Linux certifications to help you hone your skills and so forth. So a Linux consultant pay range can range between 165,000 to 175. A Linux engineer uh, could range from 97 to 171. A Linux kernel engineer can range from 128 to 171, but it can go higher for the Linux kernel engineer because the kernel engineers can play with the um, kernel at the edge and do edge computing. So I will push this range up a little higher. Um, junior sys admins can range from 75 to 163. Um, Linux kernel developers, which will go along with the kernel engineers, can range 134 to 161, but I will push that even further too especially when you start dealing with C++ and C and embedded and you're really at the lower level, those ranges can go higher, especially if you start looking at places like Netflix. Let me do this. Let's go Netflix. Um, Colonel Engineer Job. All right. So that's a software engineer. That's observability um let's go here um let's type in linux um so you can see they got different ones python platform low latency transport design just a whole different things that you can do with linux but even one step further let's go levels fyi and then let's type in Netflix. And then let's go to Netflix. All right. So we have a software engineer, software engineer, manager, data scientist, technical, human recruiter, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Just a, 
regular information technologist uh, could be 275 on on a on a minimum. But remember, they're in California, so that could be a pro that could be an issue too. But I think I don't think yeah, these are in Brazil. This one is remote. So you can go to level F FYI and look and see what a software engineer would be doing. Container execution across EC2 on time on host runtime execution, capacity management. I want you to know Go Java. Um building uh highly distributed systems. Um uh complex and fuzzy requirements. That's on the software side. Let me see if they got anything on uh that's not an engineer. IT support to see. So they got lead that you can't, they got their own support. They got their own stack. That's what this looks like here. But here's it right here where you're uh, cross-functional partners with, with the network and the infrastructure, information security, workplace, just different things you'll be work people you'll be working with. Uh, necessary skills. Uh, right here, knowledge of advanced troubleshooting for Mac OS, Chrome, OS, Linux, and various applications. So, again, that's what you'll see there. So, let's go back over to this one. Solaris. Some people still got Solaris around here. I haven't seen Solaris in a minute. Embedded Linux engineer, senior Linux engineer, Linux DevOps engineer. Now, again, let's talk about these titles they're just saying linux devops engineer but you can then be a senior linux devops engineer you could be a staff linux devops engineer you could be a principal linux devops engineer or you could be a distinguished uh um, linux devops engineer each one goes higher and each one's pay range changes as well too so these pay ranges can change what's going on mark right um senior linux system engineer linux developer embedded linux developer red hat linux administrator right 113 to 114 red hat linux engineer linux support engineer linux architect um linux unix system admin red hat engineer linux security administrator system linux system engineer and the list goes on right these are just all the different things different titles that you can have in linux as uh as your title but then when you start sticking senior and staff and distinguish in there that changes that changes right so that's just on that's the w2 side so i went to upwork and I want to see on Upwork what are the best Linux system admins out there. And I want to see their rates. I want to see their rates. So let's look at their rates. So one guy, um, Scott B, says $50 an hour, right? Scott B says $50 an hour, all right? So let me get this blown up a little bit more. Yeah, that looks a little better. Scott B say fifty dollars an hour, but Sean G, he was like, "Yo, my time is worth one hundred and twenty dollars an hour." Somebody else is one hundred five, but Stephen C said, "Y'all ain't gonna waste my time." You want me, you got to pay for me. 200 an hour. 200 an hour. Two hundred an hour. So let's look at these numbers. Um, pull out the calculator. Let's get the calculator. Let's calculate. 
200 an hour. Let's say you do uh, 40 hours a week. Let's say that's 8,000 a month. Let's say he get hired on for a four month project. He might make 32,000 in four months, 1099. Right? So the question is, is, is 32,000 in four months a bad thing? You tell me. You tell me, right? So with that being said, you can get the certs and have the skills and freelance on the side, right? There's that on the first show, I talked about W2 money. Now let's talk about W2 money and 1099 money and you have that flowing right so you got your w2 money and it's doing its thing it's 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 pumping it's doing this thing you like you know what you keep doing what you do w2 and then you get uh your 1099 and your 1099 is doing this thing and you like so 1099 now I got to, because I'm a business now. Over here on W-2 side, I'm it's they business. On this side, it's your business. So now we got to set ourselves up. Now we got to set up tax structures. Now we got to put things into perspective. Now we got to do some, do some, we got to do some work, right? So let's continue. Someone else say $50 an hour. Another person say, you want me 150, 150 an hour. Somebody else said, well, you know, 28 is good for me. I do it for cheap. You know, it is what it is. Somebody else is like 69. I don't know why they just don't say $70 an hour, but okay. Another one is 25. Somebody's 45. And then this comes down to also countries too. Different countries do this too. Some people live in different countries and they don't need that much money. They just looking for the work. So $40 an hour, $30 an hour, $50 an hour, 25. I think the most I saw was 260, 90. I would stick around the, the, the $100 an hour. You find Linux jobs all over Hawaii. <laughs> there's, there's Linux jobs. In fact, there's, there's a lot of Linux jobs in Hawaii. Uh, $40 an hour, $40 an hour. It looks like everybody's probably around about $40 to try to stay competitive, right? So just want to show you the W-2 side. And now we're showing you the 1099 side. All right. So now let's come back over here. More W-2. So this one right here was a dev job scanner. And it looks like they just, they got some type of uh, algorithm, not algorithm, but some type of API set up and they're just pulling jobs from dice that pay the most. All right. Let me pull that up. So let's look at these. Oh, uh, let me go down a little bit. All right. So they look like they pulled these jobs from Dice. They pay the most right here from four months ago. You can see here 243 to 283. And that's for a Linux systems engineer in New York. Right. Then they got this one right here. Data Linux cloud engineer with AI at a hedge fund. From 175 to 300 K senior Linux engineer. I don't know if this is supposed to be 160 to 304. That's in Houston. Cloud data, uh, cloud data and Linux systems engineer for think tank 175 to 275. DevOps data engineer. 204, 202 to 243 in Peach Street Corners. 
Senior Systems Architect, 202 to 243. Senior Systems Architect, 202 to 243. Embedded Contractor, DOD, 182 to 243. And two certified Linux administrators on AWS platform, a 12-month project, uh, on-site and remote, $170, uh, $107 an hour for $10.99, and the other one is $10, the other one is uh, $100 an hour, right? Uh, ML Ops, 182 to 202. And then 192 for the senior Linux administrator. And I just went down the line of these, right? You could go on Dice. You can see they pulled on, they pulled from Dice. They pulled them from LinkedIn. Um let's see Dice, LinkedIn. It's it's look like what they got their API set up for here. And that's just on their site. And it looks like they probably got a range that they're sticking in. Like, it's got to be over maybe. I hadn't seen nothing less than 175. I, I hadn't seen nothing less than that. And maybe 175 is the lowest that they pull from for this right here, uh, for that. But you can go on dice.com. And we could type in Linux here. And then let's type in search. And what I should do, um, let's do this Linux and let's do dollar sign 200,000. And let's hit search. Okay. So you can see GDIT has, you get a new hire bonus of 10K for a sign on bonus. They tell you off the rip. But then you can look and see what other jobs are out here. You can also come here and hit part-time um, and look at what part-time work they got. OpenShift uh, for Paramount Software Solutions. Um, they updated this 20 hours ago, so this is still an active uh, one that they're looking for. Uh, a mainframe programmer, an architect. Um, an IBM security engineer, a Kubernetes application architect, and they want somebody part-time, a DevOps engineer part-time. Again, these, these part-time jobs can be just a side thing you could do, um, especially if you're looking for side work and uh, look at how much work you got to do and, and quote yourself properly, right? Don't underpay yourself. Because if you underpay yourself, you ain't going to want to stick to the work. So you got to make it something where it's something that you, you want to do and that and that person can pay. Right? But you also, it's got so it's got to be something that you want to do and then not take a whole lot of your time. Like you want to get in and get out. Right? So hit up Dice for those jobs. Right? I just wanted to show you that one. All right. We showed you that. All right, Linux system administrator and how to become one. Read the comments here. I agree with drone. I currently don't have my cert. I'm going to get my cert. Yep. Yeah, you need it. You, I mean, I would say this. You can get your cert. Or you can be really good at it, where you can talk to how to move in and out of the actual uh, operating system, how to move in and out of command line, and so forth and so on. So it, it's really on you, right? I'm, I'm going to say that. But does the cert help? Yes. The cert does help. All right. Um, Bog, we went over jobs in hawaii we had somebody on for jobs in hawaii for devops um reva uh r-e-v-a we know the ceo over there so um tell him tamika sent you he, he's on my linkedin too um but yeah you can go check him out he's looking for folks all right how to become a linux system administrator you can set up a home lab do you know all about that setting up home labs 
she remember that. Or uh, you can go for the cert itself. You can study. You can download uh, Vagrant and start playing with a uh, Linux box and Vagrant. You can use VMware Fusion. You can use VirtualBox. Set up you some nodes on your laptop. You can install it on a bare metal machine. Get your Dell, excuse me, an older Dell server with some drives in it. You know about. 20 terabytes worth of space, slap slap Red Hat Linux on there, get your free uh, license from using the developer login, make sure you get create a developer account and go from there, right? So it's really on you how you want to set your environment up with you. and, and your time, right? You may not have money for all of that, right? You can get a Nook. You can get a little small Mac Mini um, if you wanted to. I mean, there's different things. To put it on a laptop. Like, it's not. It's really on you. All right. So it says here. Let me blow it up a little bit more. It says if you were to ask a group of Linux sysadmins men about how they arrived at their current job, there's a chance you'll get several different answers about the path and the steps they each took. That said, there are still ways you can develop a baseline understanding of the kind of preparation Linux system administrators need in order to become one. The best adult colleges and career guides has gathered the data here to provide you with an insight into the education that's commonly needed for sysadmins to land a job. Um, this page uh, examines real job postings to identify its experience levels and specific skills that employers of Linux system administrators are expecting to, to have. Okay, so let me tell you what my expectations are. Let me tell you what my expectations are for you to become a Linux admin. And if I had to, somebody slid me your resume and I had to in interview you for a job. Um, I'm expecting you to know a, a baseline of how to create a bash script. I am going to expect for you to know Ansible. As much as people don't want to act like that's not part of a baseline, that's part of a baseline to me. This is just strictly my standards. I'm actually going to want to know if you know how to use Vim. Do you know how to troubleshoot? Um, do you know how to uh, set up uh, logging? Do you understand how to rsync? and do backups and what a tar file is and how to create a tar file, how to untar a file. I am going to want to know if you know how to install packages. Do you know how, I would even go on a limb and say, uh, do you even understand SE Linux, how to turn it on, how to turn it off, how to set it, how to set SE Linux up if you had to create a file and make sure it was under some particular, uh, I don't want to say state, uh, but under some particular guidelines of SE Linux. I am going to want to know if you even understand how to set up a cron job. Do you understand how to, um, do you understand what a process is and what a fork is? What is a parent and what it was a child process? I'm, I'm going to want to know if you know those things. I'm going to want to know, do you understand that if the machine is out of space, can you figure out how to use LVM? Do you know how to create partitions? Do you understand the difference between a partition and then using LVM? Do you understand the difference between EST4 and XFS? Do you understand how to kickstart a machine? Do you Can you explain DNS to me? Can you explain DHCP to me? Can you explain TFTP? Can you... Tell me what SSH is. Do you know port numbers? Um, do you know how to set a static IP address on a Linux box? Do you know how to set it up for DHCP? Do you know how to configure two NICs on a box? I'm going to want to know those things. And I think every Linux admin at the core should know those baseline things, just at a baseline. Now, to add to that, I would want to know if you understood how the brute process to works what is the kernel? How do I update the kernel? How do I install new kernel modules? Um, and what is the significance of drivers? 
those things are important. I would want to know if you know those things. Just at a, as a baseline. Now, the other side of that is, can if can I give you 10 Linux boxes and can you configure them to look all the same based upon some guidelines that I give you? And can you make that happen within an hour and a half? I want to know if you what would be your approach in order to do that. I would ask you that in an interview question. I will also ask you in an interview question, um, how do I make um how do I make my instances in AWS and Azure look the same? If I spin up an instance in AWS and I spin up an instance in Azure, I want them to both be the same. What 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 am I gonna use in order to make that? be the same what tools am i going to use what tools would you recommend that i use in order to make that happen right those are things that i would ask because if if you can make linux and in aws and in azure and on prem all three look the same then you understand automation and then you understand how to uh you understand how to cut down on making duplicate work, right? So you got to you got to standardize that, right? You got to standardize that. Well, yeah, Jerome uh persistent mounts with FS tab, but uh what I'm looking for is is that you understand LVM and how to expand the, the partitions. Well, Terraform is one thing, John, to to um to to create the instances but if i want my instance in aws and my instance in azure and my instance on prem to have the same packages to have the same version of the kernel to have the same version of the packages it's going to be more than terraform it is going to be probably an ansible playbook or something like that right Uh, I ain't scaring nobody away. Mark, you know that. I'm just giving you the truth. My expect, I'm going to tell you this. My expectations of what you should know is probably light compared to what other people will ask you. Because other people will ask you this. Um, how do I find, uh, uh, the process that had the process that has been running the longest on a, on a Linux box? How do I pick, how, how do I, how do I kill that process? How do I know, how do I know what file that process has written? Um, how do I know what file that process has written log messages to? Um, how can I write a bash script to check? 500 machines and ensure that they have uh the right dns servers inside of their um etsy resolve resolve.com file right so and then how would take how would i take that and move that into um an ansible playbook Uh, engineering, um, is Linux used? Well, Linux uh, operating systems in general are used in most engineers. So it could be Linux. It could be, um, Red Hat Linux. It could be Ubuntu. It could be a Windows box. Could be. All right. So let's see. What education and expertise is needed for Linux sysadmins? Do Linux system administrators need a degree? What kind of experience do Linux systems administrators need, typically need? Thanks for the data from real job postings. We can, with some clarity on, on these questions as well, and level of education that is commonly required for sysadmins to secure a job. So I'm going to blow this up so y'all can see this a little more. All right, so here we go. They're, they're saying that 45% of sysadmins have a um, 
a a bachelor's degree um but they also say that 30 percent have no education listed eight percent have an associate's eight percent have a ged seven percent have a master's and two percent have a phd Oh, you don't use lineage much. That's cool. All right? So 45% have a degree and the the and the and the 30%, the largest the largest next number don't have a degree. A bachelor's degree is a level of education sought by most employees of Linux administrators. According to the job data, a bachelor's degree was required for 45% of the jobs. And if you are going into DOD space, you're going to need a degree, right? It says in 30% of the jobs listings, no education was, was, was listed, right? Experience level required in job postings for Linux sysadmins. So 7% um, with no years, 0 to 1. 2 to 3, 33%. 4 to 6 is 38 um 11 percent is i mean 12 percent is seven to nine and 10 percent is 10 years or more i'm 10 years or more so it looks like i fall into the upper 10 percent right while the amount of required experience will vary based on the job responsibility and the seniority of the position an ag aggregate view of the job postings data can can help paint a picture of experience levels sought for most job openings for linux sysadmins and 38 percent of the job postings for linux sysadmins employers were looking for candidates uh with four to six years of experience and 33 and 33 percent of the listings employers were looking for candidates two to three years and then so forth what kind of degree uh, do Linux sysadmins need? All right. It says programs for Linux system administrators, 17 programs that can help train for careers as a Linux admin, completion for system administrators 205, and openings for Linux sysadmins was 28,000. All right. So far, this page has provided detail into the level of education and my experience for Linux sysadmins but what type of education and degree will help prepare you for the career field? Now, according to the occupational data, there were 17 ac key academic programs. They, they got to be focused on, on Linux. I, I don't know any program, I, I don't know any college degree that will help me with Linux administration. That I, I've never seen one. Um, top degree programs, they got computer science, I don't see they helping you with Linux other than how to program. Uh, computer and information systems, maybe information technology, computer information systems and security information assurance and computer system networking and telecommunications, maybe. Maybe the last two, but most definitely I don't see none of these. I don't see none of these. Unless, unless you're going to get a quarter, uh, and even if you get a quarter of Linux, uh, of a Linux class, most of the time, the teacher only do it for about two or three weeks, and then they move on. All right, let's see. Yeah, they just got computer science. I didn't see. They got system engineering. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. I don't see that from these. You, you do better by getting a computer engineering degree and then getting a cert. Top online college for working adults. That was, okay, that was it. All right. So let's get into this. Oracle lays off hundreds. I wanted to talk about this earlier. And then they rescinded the job offers to people and they cut uh, open positions and the fact that they, they're losing a $28 billion contract. They lost a $28 billion contract. 
how is the question and what does that mean for Oracle? 28 billion. All right, let's get into it. Oracle laid out hundreds of employees in its health unit Thursday. Um, let's keep going. Yeah, Oracle on Thursday laid off hundreds of its employees, rescinded job offers, and cut back open positions within its health unit. Three familiar people familiar with uh, with the matter told Insider, the laid off employees will receive a severance pay equal to four weeks a month, plus one additional week for every year of service. And a, and a payout of vacation, uh, two people uh, stated, right? Oracle include, Oracle Health includes health IT giants, uh, I guess, Cerner, which is, acqu which is acquired last year for $28 billion. Uh, current uh, former employees recently told Insider Oracle has halted raises and promotions and laid out 1,000 employees in the unit since the acquisition. Thursday's layoff were due to a large part to CERN's challenge to work with the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs, the VA. The VA is on a rampage. They are redoing their infrastructure along with the IRS, which hired uh, Cerner to replace its homemade medical records with Cerner technology when the people told work began in 2020 <clears throat> and has been played with many fits and starts. Most recently, the VA paused the rollout due in April due to issues with the sites where Sinner's records have already been deployed. They're going to have to have somebody come in and do an emergency. Somebody, they're going to call somebody like a GDIT or Deloitte and come in and do the work or both together. And they got to figure out how they're going to do that work. So somebody going to, some, some heads are going to roll and some people going to get hired. This situation for Cerner has less government-related work to do and led to its round of cuts. Cerner is Oracle's largest acquisition, and insiders say it has become a primary focus for Chairman and, CT and CTO Larry Ellison, uh, who has a vision for a revolutionary health data system in the cloud for providers and public health officials to access uh, data across organizations and believes the system will prove Oracle's cloud business to the world. So they got laid off. Right? And if if they was having a rough time starting, who, who knows what that is? All right. Let me close this one. And did I do did I go over this? I uh, probably didn't. Let's do this now, then I'll go back to the quiet thing. So these are like DevOps jobs that are Linux uh based as well, too. Yeah, I saw the I saw the it's on it's on my list. I got it up there. Uh senior manager infrastructure engineer, NVIDIA at two from one four one sixty four to two fifty three. Senior DevOps engineer. This goes back to oh, I say the titles matter. Senior staff, um, senior staff principal, distinguished. Um, senior from one sixty to two forty. Uh, TikTok one eighty seven to two eighty. Um, this is in New York with City, one seventy to two fifty six. Green Lake HP, one twenty-four to two eighty-six. Uh, IT DevOps uh, administrator at the state of Michigan, up to two hundred thousand. Here we go. Staff, senior staff, one eighty to two twenty-seven. And here we go right here, a senior software uh, engineer infrastructure at 160 an hour um we have senior devops 
uh, senior DevOps manager, a lead DevSecOps from 176 to 282. Right, I think y'all get the gist on the numbers. Drop a one in the chat if it makes sense. All right, so stop quiet quitting and start quiet thriving to build resilience and find joy in your job. I'm just going to say this. Uh, start stacking your skills. When you get bored at work, do what do you do when you're at work and you're bored? Do you? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I'm never bored at work. I always have something to do. Being bored at work. I mean, I get bored at work. Hey, let me tell you. As a bartender in my youth, there's always something to do. You can be cleaning up. You can be going to a lunch and learn. You could be looking at what training that you have in the pipeline. You can be looking at your emails. You are always supposed to be entrenched in what's going on at the JOB. But because I am going back to the bench, I will be skilling up and coming up with a training plan to finish some stuff that I have started and that I want to get done. And so I will be doing that inside my jobs learning portal and on some um, and like through Udemy and Coursera, I got some courses in progress. I'm doing Security Plus. Um, I have a um, under the sea. And we have a core like there's a core infrastructure, um, core infrastructure type curriculum that I was in progress in at work. So I'm going to catch up on that stuff and, you know, talk to my managers and see where we're going or where I'm supposed to go next or, you know, just make some moves. But yeah, you should always be learning. Never be bored. No. When I had kids, I'm like, y'all bored? Are you telling me you're bored? Please don't tell me that you don't have nothing to do. I don't. Please don't tell me that. Try, anybody who sleep with a tablet right here, you always got something to do. Mine just racing. Right. I knew it was hurting the net and not mine. I knew it. Okay. Hopefully she'll be back soon and it is just cycling out. Or maybe one of her things got uh, died on her, but who knows? Hopefully, to make that be back soon. Let's see. I love struggle streaming. Oh, Mark, please don't tell me you're bored. Oh, please don't tell me you're bored. And and you know it. I I got some really positive feedback um on. Um, my leadership style and I, I, it is um, there's so many things that we can we can do and I and I for all means I am not um, always like a hundred percent on it I am um, I am the black hole of resources so if something comes on my up on my mind and I'm looking for something um, I'm always um, going to like stop and research that thing. However, <clears throat> I I do practice what I preach when we come up here every day or every week, you know, to speak to everybody. I do make sure that I practice what I preach. So I always go back to emails that the leadership has sent out. Um, and to see like any updates when it comes to like changing changes with the line of business. Um, I also um, I check my calendar for that week and see what's going on for that week. And I do sign up to like any meetings when it comes to um, 
um, the the corporate overall structure when it comes to like my team. Um, and because what happens is when you go to those meetings and sometimes you just have them playing in the background, I, I make sure that I'm in those meetings just so I can hear what's going on so that I can understand the changes that are going to trickle down to us. Like we had some really great, some changes that were happening. They were happening um, very, very quickly um, because my company migrated and so now that they're in a stable position they got a data center project going on they have us we're going agile so all this training and all these things needed to be like done really really quickly so they were coming at us really really fast come to find out the government was enforcing a whole lot of different laws and because i'm in the banking domain we have to get these done quickly and you know i hey let me go and knock this stuff out as soon as it comes in that way i'm not lagging and so that i can get what i need quickly and go ahead and skill up on it and if i don't understand that next meeting i'm there with questions or i can ask my, my team lead or whoever it is the questions and get it done so yeah there's always something to do are you back yeah my laptop died i i, I do it And to see it was dying. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Cigars with Mac. It was it was crazy. Like we got some agile stuff, and I'm on a production team, so um, it, it 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 mainly came down. And because I understand the business aspect of it, it um, it it I see it from different angles. And what it was is really why we went agile and we're putting like a lot of our tasks that we were working on agile because they wanted there it was accounting for time it was a budgeting thing because i got sent back um to to the bench because of budget and i was i wasn't replaced with somebody because i'm on a small team but you know dollars does in rupees are two different things i'm a, i'm a bigger expense than a, my teammate that works in india you know what i'm saying however is, is the is the team going to feel that hit? Absolutely, because there's so many other dynamics at play when it comes to communicating um, with uh, users, end users, any type of end users, vendors, in a capacity where there's a lot of nuances and are um, we're on shore. So those are native English speakers nine times out of ten, and you know those advisors are they're really not that tech savvy. So to have an issue that is going on and you're not really being understood and there's a little impatient, you know, that that really takes a hit to your metrics. So, you know, that, that was my little two cents. Oh, I need that. I need that. Yeah, and I agree, engineering cannabis. I always study and work and make sure it's aligned with my job. Um, <laughs> just check in because because things are happening so fast and everybody's kind of like heads down and doing what they're tasked with um for me i find like it's hard to get in touch with management and get something solid because i work for a consultancy and then you know that's that consultancy dynamic and then you know you you're within your project so there are certain things that you can you know speak with in regards to the line of business but you build a relationship with certain people and you have those conversations and then you know when you get your allies they are there championing for you to make sure that you go back and get what you need from you know the consultancy per se because it all works hand in hand so so yeah, do you always gotta be in it so do you want to answer this question here it's not a question you want to talk about this statement here to make you're so high, you high up and stay sharp. sharp. I don't know what that means, though. I do. You are high exactly. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sharp. I know what he's saying. Okay, but tell me. Question, uh, break it down for me. The question is how? How do I stay sharp? Um, and how do I always keep moving forward? And you've been around me now 10 years. How do I do it? Okay, so. You interview me. No, I'm not going to interview you because I, I, I'm going to tell people the answer. And um, 
and it's based on my observation from a a a sister friend perspective and from a business perspective um number one Tamika is naturally inquisitive. She wants, she wants to, she wants to know. She has a quest for knowledge. She is literally a sponge. And she genuinely enjoys technology from a, from a young age. And you know her story. You know, she didn't really get into computers. She knew what she wanted to do, but she really didn't know how. But she has a a thirst for learning and she's always looking things up and i also think that <clears throat> because her early foundation were in smaller spaces smaller companies smaller departments it taught her to be a genuine a generalist in the infrastructure realm as a sys admin so it the role has never truly been a system admin role it's always been an expanded role because you really don't have anybody to bounce things off of and then the time that she came into the space was really different we're the squeeze generation so when Tamika came into the space you couldn't just go to the internet and get the answer. You can go to the internet and download anything. It was all these CDs we had to do, you know, these forms we had to go to. It was a different type of research. And so now I can even say for the both of us, when, when we research stuff, it's never for face value. It's always a deeper dig into something. So naturally, it has become an eight that it is it is she's always absorbing because for her also always absorbing is also how can in her thrive to in these these goals that she set for herself it is where are we going how do i position myself to prosper and to stay relevant in this space because this is what I do in sidebar. That's why I said, turn your passion into profits because it's, it, it's, it's not like it is work for her, if that makes sense. It is something she really enjoys doing. Now, sometimes you don't feel like it because you want to study what you're interested in at the time. You won't, you, they may be moving to something like, oh, I really want to do some open shift today, but I don't feel like doing that. I'm going to look at this fun stuff because this the fun f-u-n-d is that's because that's what i'm interested in right now but you 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 have to she is always absorbing knowledge in in all realms because she has the uncanny ability to see how everything fits but that's infrastructure if you understand your fundamentals you know how to spot trends that are coming down what applies to you what may be coming that you're interested in but it's not something that's going to benefit you right now but you understand it enough to talk about it you know how to go in spaces and say this is what we need and let the whole room say oh we're not going to do that right now and then months later they'll be like okay we're going to do this but you're already prepared that's tamika and that's what i've seen from the outside looking in just a sponge she uses her resources if it's a red hat vendor She's going, and if it's a problem, and this is what we have in common, if it's a problem, oh, you love trying to go get it, the answer, and fixing that problem. And she will sit on the phone for hours and hours and hours and use the vendors, those CSMs that are there as a resource to get what she wants done. And also, one other thing is, Tamika works on the stuff that nobody wants to work on. All the, all the, all the junk. All the junk. All the stuff. All the throwaway. All of that other type of stuff. She works on it. And she figures it out. She will sit there with the vendor and tell them their problem. And she will work that stuff out. And if, when it's some friction, 
She just gonna let the pig feed simmer because at the end of the day, nobody wants to touch it. And she has figured that shit out. So with that being said, the reason why that, that works is because don't nobody want to do that work. And the reason why the other part of the reason why that works is because when they don't want to do that work, um, it gives you the capacity and the time and the space to figure things out and figure out, okay, well, this is how this works and what they're working on. This is how that works. But both of those things may need to be integrated and you become the lead on that, on integrating that and then putting that together in order to get that to work. So now you become the subject matter expert. You know, the redhead may not know, the people that you're working with may not know, and now you become the subject matter expert on that to get that done and you can do the documentation and so forth and so on, and then you can train others on it. And then oh, Mark, once you let me, yeah. let me help, let me answer Mark's little question real quick before you finish. So because I, I it's it's cracking me up. Mark, not only does she have a love for it, because again, like I said, you want to work on what you want to work on, but she's also petty. So when you're sitting in a room of people that don't look like you and they're like vanilla men and they're telling you what you can't do and how you're supposed to do it, and they are just doing some old antiquated, outdated stuff, she in her pettiness, in her prideful dogness self, yeah. it's going to be like, I got you. Mm-hmm. You're going you gonna to doubt me, the T? I got you. And then she'll go and she'll go and she'll be quiet. They don't even know if she's working or not. She'll be quiet. They, oh, they are emailing. They want her to show up to be all that stuff. Meanwhile, she is burning the midnight oil. She got to get it. She she running it through the test. It's failing. I'm getting, and not only that, on your own time, on her, on our own environment, in our own sandboxes, running up our bill, like trying to figure that out. And then when the moment of truth comes, they be like, "Oh shit, this heifer did it," and she be like, "Any questions?" It's hilarious. She let the pig. She let the pig feed simmer. She let the pig feed simmer. She did. They be looking for her with broad daylight with flashlight. <laughs> I don't want to. We done. So I done solved that. Let's go on to the next thing. <laughs> but, and, and, it, and it's very challenging to be in an environment where people think they, where people are pretending like they understand and they're in positions of leadership when they truly don't. And I think that is one of the, I can really say is one of the hurdles that my sister friend really has to face on on a day. Y'all better read. I'm trying to tell you, you better read. 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 Read Read the documentation. Read it. Read the documentation. Everything you need. Everything you need to finish. And also because you never, you never know who is watching you never know who is watching you always you always think that it's just your immediate people but when people are literally speaking about you in rooms that you are not even seeing i got a word yesterday from a colleague that is on my team but when i tell you we literally are working on one thing together and we do not and we do not interact on a day-to-day basis but he called me yesterday and he he made me shed a thug tear because he was like man i've learned so much from you and i was like word you never know who is advocating for you in other rooms so when you go in there, you show up and you do you be the best you, you be your authentic you, and you go and you stunt on them. You go stunt, you go, you go stunt on them and do the best you. And then when you get that feedback, it'd be like, oh shit. I did that. Because when you're in the trenches, you don't know. Go back to you.
Max, sometimes you don't even have to take the problem. What they do is they think they being funny and they'll go and throw you the problem. Like, oh, she new on the team. We don't give her the work that we don't want to do. They gonna get, They think they're giving you scraps and throwaways. Like, you the new one on the team. Here you go. Take that. That's, that's the cold word. You said you said it a thug tear. I'm playing taps for you. She said she said you said it a thug tear. I did. I was like, oh goodness. It's like if you said it a thug tear, play taps for you. <laughs> I did. I shed it a thug tear. I was like, I needed that. <laughs> That's me, Mark, playing taps. That's that nut. <laughs> All right. So last week we did the trend. We we talked about black people and AI. And we talked about um black men being affected the most. Um and first and then black women. And um, we went into um, PwC, Price Water Cooper, um, PDF, but I didn't finish it. And so I'm gonna actually I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna come out of this PDF first. Let me get out of it first. Let me get out of that first. And let's talk. Let's look at this here. Um, um, how AI. Um, how restaurants are using AI to boost sales and growth. Um, it was a video actually. Let me see if I can get it to play. Uh, may not play here. Play for me. Play for me. You don't like me. You want to play. Let me see. Oh, here you go. Oh, hold on. Let me get this in another. Let me put it in uh, Safari. For whatever reason, y'all can't hear any such color, which is strange to me. I need to troubleshoot that. All right, let's go. Once we get past these ads. But you know what? I ain't never heard of Yahoo laying off. Not right now, anyway. Okay, so you ain't gonna play. Speaking of restaurants, okay, AI yeah. is now working its way into the industry as companies look for ways to become more efficient. Kate Rogers is more on that story. Kate. Hey, good morning, Melissa. Research from Cowan anticipates widespread adoption of AI for both voice ordering and kitchen robotics in the next 12 to 18 months for several reasons, including a tight labor backdrop and unionization risks. Now, restaurants that are or have tested the ordering technology include Yum! Brands, Carl's Jr., Hardee's, and McDonald's. For voice ordering, one key aspect of the technology is upselling consumers in a way that humans might not be comfortable doing and also freeing up time for workers to interact with guests. Panera is one company that's working with Open City AI to test out voice ordering, and it's also working with Miso Robotics using AI on its coffee to share up quality and temperature control. So the two areas we're investing in is AI in our drive-through, um, which is really uh, voice-enabled uh, AI to help automate the ordering process and free up our associates to be able to focus on high-quality food production, as well as guest interaction in the cafe. The second is um, around our coffee um, uh, quality and temperature control. So a little less guest facing in terms of what they interact with, but they benefit from the result of that AI helping us pr produce and provide a better quality and more consistent product. 
Now, Chipotle has a similar use case with Chippy, also a Miso Robotics product. Its next iteration determines how many chips need to be made with AI technology. And speaking with tech executives from both of those companies, really the emphasis seems to be on freeing up time for workers to interact more with guests and ensure that they really do have a better experience. Back over to you. Kate, um, what are the, some of the downfalls and challenges in employing AI? You always hear of it as sort of like a panacea and, and the greatest thing since sliced bread. Yeah, Melissa, so a few things I'd list. Franchisees at bigger companies like a McDonald's or uh, Restaurant Brands International all getting on board and agreeing that it works. So that's one thing. Language models was another thing that was brought up to me by Cowan. They're tough to train not only uh, in literally what language you're speaking, but also on the nuances of the menu and ordering. So you really have to have a well-trained language model there that understands uh, all of that around customization. And that changes restaurant roles as well in certain capacities. So what does that look like for workers? No one wants to be first, right? Because they want to get it right. But um, Andrew Charles like Cowan did mention to me that this kind of looks like what third party delivery looked like about five years ago, right? Everyone was thinking about it. Some brands were testing it out. And guess what? It's everywhere now with the exception of McDonald's, which of course, or uh, Domino's rather, which doesn't work with those third party aggregators. Um, so everyone kind of thought about it and then jumped in in a big way. And he expects AI to be the same thing. Yeah, I was actually thinking of Domino's, Kate, because they were really first uh, in terms of automating a lot of, of what how they do things. And, uh, you know, is Domino's out there as sort of a leader here? I'm sure they're thinking about it, but Domino's also, you have to consider, it looks at this as kind of like a tech pipeline where things will be around for a really long time. And again, I don't think anyone wants to be first, Melissa. I think people really want to think about it in a very thoughtful way and get it right and make sure that not only are customers happy with what they're seeing, but also workers, right? Because this tight labor market is also a key factor here. This can make things better. You want to keep workers happy, uh, but the AI and the technology needs to be working in a way that works for them, right? So that they don't up and quit because they don't like what's going on. So to answer your question there on you saying AI and surveillance, it's too late. You have been surveilled, surveilled. So um, it, is, it is not for surveillance. It's, I don't, I, I don't, I. You got a, you got a social security number and a cell phone. You got a social security number and a cell phone, and you drive in a connected device car that tracks that goes up to a satellite to utilize its gps in order to get you around the city i don't know if you don't that's tracking you have an app on your phone that connects to your car and can remote start your car from anywhere in the anywhere as long as you get a satellite you are on the internet right now <laughs> watching this and your IP address yeah, right. is on the informational superhighway. Yeah, right. so, so surveillance. Right. Yeah, it's not even, you know what I mean? Like when I hear that, I just really don't think people really understand. Don't be over there lifting the veil of the matrix. I like my <laughs> false sense of security. Don't be doing that. Right. I, hey. I really don't think y'all understand the level of... <laughs> Mm -mm. Oh, we are not which, talking about that on this show. No, uh, I don't think you, you understand the level of information you freely give away. You walk into a grocery store, you're on camera. You go into, you drive into a parking lot of any, mostly any plaza, you're on, on camera. You drive down the street, you're on camera. Right now, if I go outside in the back, I'm on the neighbor's camera. Right. Like, if I go out on the front, I am on the neighbor's camera. Like, but not only that. Not only that. Um, let's talk about these cameras, right? Um, camera. I want to go put the piece in this. I, I just want to roll back. Google in the woods surveillance. I'm, uh, I'm, I know I'm spelling that wrong. It was a video that I was watching where now um, Google, I want to say Google or whatever um, is uh, now you cannot be off the grid anymore because off they, they have increased satellite watching um in the remote locations and have connected the wi-fi 
to as well too. So being off the grid is not unless you got something blocking it. It's something that you can't do. So um, I want to say Google satellites. Um, let me look at the videos. Uh, I can't, I can't remember. I, I'll, I'll have to bring it back up. It was, it was, it was a guy, he was showing how far out in the woods he was and He's like, he used to be, be able to be out here in the woods with no cell phone, but now he's like, I'm, I'm out here now and I got cell phone, you know, I got cell phone servers. So I'm just pointing out like, unless you're in an underground bunker and you've matched your IP address and you bouncing off of 15 cell phone towers, then yeah, you're, you're a scrambler. <laughs> that's uh, that's it. Uh, yeah, yeah. You don't have to use those services. You have a cell phone. You got a laptop. It uses those services. Your internet uses those. In fact, your I think they were sharing out your internet too. I think it was something like uh, if you share out your internet in these remote locations, like they were sharing, they, it was taking the internet that was already there and sharing, sharing it out. And there was nothing you could do about it. There's nothing you could do about it. Um, but yeah. So let's get into, and um, Engineering cannabis, I already knew AI was going into food. It makes more sense. I mean, to 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 do the testing to see what the food is. I mean, that just makes sense to me. Like if you go into the store, ain't nobody in there but the the, the screen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's already there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I already know that. Been there. Yeah. As soon as you can go in there and, and do it yourself. All right, so the mega trends. Um, uh, the mega trends are the tremendous forces reshaping society and with it the world of work. The economic shifts that are redistributing power, wealth, competition, and op opportunity around the globe. The disruptive innovations, radical thinking, new business models, and resource scarcity that are impacting every se sector. Business need a clear and meaningful purpose and mandate to attract and retain employees, customers, and partners in the decade ahead. All right, so in this, they're talking about the technological breakthroughs, the rapid advances in, technolo in technological innovation, the demographic shift, the, the, chart, the changing size, the distribution, and the age profile of the world population, Significant increase in the world's population moving to moving to live in cities and shift in global economic power. Power is shifting between developed and developing countries. Um, and we see that playing out. We see places like the Americas where things are playing out there, right? All right, so the the rapid urbanization. By 2030, the UN projects that 4.9 billion people will be urban dwellers. By 2050, the urban population will have increased by some 72%. Already, many of the largest cities have a GDP, a GDP larger than mid-sized country. This, in this new world, cities will become important agents for job creation. All right. It says here, the demographic shift. Uh, when we start talking about the distribution and the age profile, we already said people getting a uh, living longer. We already said that, right? But we also saw the guy uh, switch out his blood, did the blood transfusion from his 17-year-old to him and his blood transfusion from him to his father. And there are others that are doing that as well, too. They're not the first vampires to do it. Um, so just keep that in mind. 
with a few regional exceptions, the world population is aging, putting pressure on businesses, social institutions, and e economies. Now, Gen X is getting older and baby boomers are getting older and retiring, if not already retired. The world, the U.S. population is the average age of the U.S. population, I think, was 33. Or maybe just in the black community, it may be 33. However, we're going to have to take some time and figure out what are you going to do with that aging population? Because with that aging population, in particular with Gen X, and they're, and they're going to have an ability, I think the average age for Gen X uh, uh, for, for death was 83, was predicted to be 83. So now you got people who are living longer. So who's going to, you're going to have to have money to build a, a fortress around you for safety. And when I say that, I'm talking about um, the millennials and the Gen Zers are the ones that will be taking care of you um, in your old age. So the question is, are you comfortable with them? Who's going to be the nurse to come and take care of you? What does that look like? Um, you going to the nursing home, what does that look like, right? So just something to think about, right? All right, so now, um, oh, no, they are. People are living longer. We know that. People are living longer. We see that. You can see that. You can see, let me say it this way. Women are living longer. We can see that. We can see that women are living longer. I don't know where you've been, Filthy Frank, but they are living longer. Yeah, and you can you can look that up. Average baby boomer age. Um, uh, let's see. What's that? What's on average? By 2030, all baby boomers will be age 65 or older. Yeah. And it says the average net worth of baby boomers is around, let's see, millennials, 400,000. Let me look at this. Of course, they got the most money, 53 trillion. But yeah, they're living longer. Yeah. I mean, I'm. I don't make the stats up, but I mean, hell, we can see that. I can tell you about 10, 10 people who died before 45. And also, uh, and they're not celebrities either. These are not, these are local homegrown Southerners <laughs> that have died before 45. Yeah, if, if, and, and that's just, it's more than that, but that's just 10. I know it's more than that. But the other thing is, too, that that is the issue is it's not just a fact of living longer. Uh, and we can look that up. Um, U.S. Uh, death by age over 100 years. All right. Let's look. All right, let's see. Women's life expectancy was 79 years in the U.S. and while men's was 73. The U.S. has a higher rate of avoidable deaths, which is measured by the death before the age of 75 among men and comparable to other countries. Uh, why American men die younger than, the, than women on average and how to fix it. It's not like a thing. Like it's not like it's hidden. It's hidden news. So we, and we know that um, mortality trends in the CDC. Let's blow that up. Look and see if they got. Uh, let me see. Do they have age down here? So this goes up to twenty twenty. So I I would I expect twenty twenty be on a. On the, on the declining scale here, right? 
but I'm looking for a scale of the num the age. Uh, I'm looking for the age ages over time. That's what I'm looking for. Let me see. Is this give me that? No, it's not giving me the age. Uh, let's see, that was from 2019. I don't want the life expectancy of the world. I just want the one for here. Oh uh, yeah, what I see, I mean, what I see with my own eyes, I mean, I see younger, I see men die earlier. I see women living longer, but I also see um, from the, I don't know, I guess you could say millennial Gen Zer area, the older Gen Zers and the um, younger millennials. I also, I also see, I also see them uh, in some some parts, not all, are, are violent towards each other too. So I, I'm not sure uh, when it comes to how that plays out, like. In terms of okay, you were violent. Don't mean you actually died. But then in some cases, some of them have passed on, right? So I, I see that as well too. So th those are questions I have. Yeah, help the money. But I I, I really want to say it's more or more along the lines of health engineering cannabis. I really do. Uh, let's see here. Let me back out of this. All right. So in here, they talk about, let me blow this up. They talk about assisted intelligence, widely available today, improves what people and organizations are going to do. A simple example prevalent in cars is the GPS um navigation program that offer directions to drivers and adjust to the road conditions so assistant intelligence augmented intelligence emerging today helps people and organizations to do things they couldn't otherwise do for example a car ride sharing business couldn't exist without the combination of programmers and organized that organize the service autonomous intelligence being developed for the future establishes machines that act on their own. And an example of this would be self-driving vehicles uh, when 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 they come into widespread use. And we see that with uh, the Waymo taxi. I mean, you see that with the Waymo taxi. Uh, Waymo taxi. I mean, I think I've seen that, right? Um. That has no audio. I don't know why. Why is it in Chrome? Mm -hmm. I guess so. Let's go over here. Showing up on the first page of Google might not be the best for everyone. But for business owners, it is. Take my vintage's online store. It ranks for thousands of competitive keywords like vintage clothes.
A self-driving taxi service called Waymo is coming to Los Angeles. The service already up and running in San Francisco. Rich DeMuro takes us for a ride in one of the cars in today's Tech Smart. So I'm here in San Francisco where Waymo has fully autonomous cars picking up people and dropping them off just like a taxi, except the big difference is there's no driver. We got to try this out. The way you do this is kind of like any other ride share. You open up the app, 555 five, five, Laguna Street, nine bucks. It says, I'll see you in eight minutes. All right, so this is a question. This is a question. And this question to the audience, what y'all think? Um, you gotta, you can't make it across town to pick your kid up from the daycare. You put your kid, your kid in a, in a driverless taxi with mirrors around it, lock them in the car and, and send them to, to their grandmama house. Would you do it? Ninety-eight percent of being a parent is the, the drive. That's what I'm saying. You ain't got a fight. Ninety-eight percent. You know, I, I, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where it's you, like the the the. Person, I'm on the fence because they're not in there with a stranger person. They're not in there with a stranger. They say they're not in there with a stranger. You, you but you don't me. know if they're gonna touch something. So it's like you be like but you, but, but, you, but then go down and buckle up. Yeah, but you can integrate and you can come on the screen in the car and, and talk to the kid while they go across town. You know what? From a child who took the public transportation at six years old, they're getting in a driverless car. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna say I'm 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 gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go. What I'm gonna do it the first time with her. We're gonna go together the first time. <laughs> I'm just not gonna just be like, just get send my kid. But just to think, if your mother had driverless car back in the day, yeah, it would depend on the age of the child. But I mean, if you got somebody, a child that's got to be picked up from the daycare, and the grandmother lives 15 minutes away from the daycare, and um and and somebody could be there to pick the child up out of the car right but i think i had a lot more in we both had independence but when it came to you know that in in regards of where we needed to go however like when we came home i think you were locked down a little stronger than i was <laughs> i i was when it came to that but you know it it just, it, dep it depends actually it depends and, and people know their kids you know what i'm saying like it also depends on the child if you know your child is rambunctious they really don't listen to anybody or they have um learning disabilities or something like that like that's something you might not want to do but i think it's each kid may be different and then if it's a group of it is it a bus what what is it what what just is it car. You know, so just yeah, the car, just the teacher gonna walk out to the car, um, and put the child in the car. Make yeah, sure but if if it's an option where I'm in the car with my kid, absolutely. Well, I mean, yeah, you could be on the car. You could be in the car on the screen. Yeah, absolutely. You could be on the car on the screen and talking to the child as 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 they go along. I, right. Absolutely. I mean, I, I got, I have family that, you know, you run an errand, you go down the street or do something and your kids are at that age where they know they don't have to touch nothing and they're on the tablet. Like technology has afforded, you know, certain, certain luxuries in that. But again, I was a kid that had different freedoms. Like, you know, when your guy kids came here and they teenagers and I'm like, can they walk to the park? You're like, no, you can drive them to the park. And I'm like, thanks, well, bro, well, kids. Well, the only way that's gonna happen, Frank, if the if the child is able to get to the front, and I think you would childproof the car where you would have oh, some yeah. divide, wow. divide it up. Yeah, I don't see I don't see that happening. Yeah, um, and our and our other what did we talk? Oh, we talked about that yesterday. Google soundstorm. Yeah, where the AI voices. I mean, you know. Yeah. Sometimes we just gonna go to the left. I mean, it could be so many if if it was a fifth. But hey, I like getting in the car and being like, 
Hey Google. <laughs> <laughs> Directions. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it's it just depends. Like certain things, I'm not with it. Like when we talked about tracking, the first thing I did was look to make sure my location was off on my phone. But sometimes that might be on. Like I'm sitting on the computer right now. Like yeah i just i'm i'm just thinking um they already have a car service this was one kiana was working on to pick up kids uh uber for kids they already have that they already have the uber for kids but because the parents couldn't make back and forth to to the practices and stuff so they already have uber for kids that's already a thing uh, i forget the name of um of the app uh uber for kids uh yeah hop skip drive hop skip drive it says it's not uber or live for kids but yeah okay so many people ask if hop skip drives like uber or live and in an age where companies say they're uberizing a particular field, there are many. There are so many reasons why hop skip drive is not the Uber for kids or live. Um, hop skip drive. That's like Uber. Uh, the short answer is no. Uber and Lyft provide a convenient on-demand ride-share solution for adults. Hop skip drive is uniquely designed to arrange transportation for the kids ages six and up, who ride by themselves with trusted and thoroughly vetted care drivers. That long that the longer answer like, that's what I'm saying, right? They ride with those care drivers now. Eliminate the care drivers, right? And put them in the back of a, 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 a of an autonomous car, right? Let me go here. Hop, skip, drive. You know, hop, skip, drive. And let's go to videos. Um, Let's see. I drive for Hop Skip Drive because I'm giving back to the parents who need the help to be there and be supportive. I'm proud to drive with Hop Skip Drive because I know that my interaction with kids can provide an impact in their lives. This has really afforded me the opportunity to really explore new neighborhoods and to meet a lot of really amazing kids. Care drivers make the experience so fun. They wait till you're ready to leave and make you feel safe in the car. One of my favorite times was when the care driver let me listen to my own music. I have two children of my own and only wish this service was available when I had them. All right, so we already have that. Now, now you may not feel comfortable with that, right? So you take that and you do this. Yeah. And then, like, your kids got conflicting schedules and, you know, it... The ride is about nine bucks. While we wait for this, I'll tell you about the car that's going to pick me up. It's a Jaguar. I pace all electric car. For safety reasons, the cars stop in certain areas to pick you up. And so on your app, it'll tell you I should walk 90 feet ahead to where it's safe to pick me up. So there's the car. Oh, that's so cool. It's still stopping. Open, the, open the trunk, put your stuff in the back, and let's go in. Oh, this is so wild. Close the trunk. Here we are. Oh, it's it's a driving car. It says, good afternoon, start ride. And I see my destination right there. And I even have a place to charge my phone. All right, to start the ride, here we go. Heading to Ben and Jerry's. Please make sure your seatbelt is fastened. For any questions, oh press gosh. the call support button to speak with the rider support agent. <laughs> It's cruising the street just like a regular driver would. We're actually passing another Waymo. So they honk to each other. And I love that you see the, uh, the map on the screen here. What's really interesting is that this car is very sure of itself. It's not like creeping along the streets. It's driving like a real human would. So you feel like it's confident about what it's doing. The best part is watching the wheel move all by itself. Proceeding on Waller Street. You've got your map view, your music, oh, your temperature. You can even adjust the temperature. Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah, here we go. We got a truck that's in our lane and we're just going around it. No big deal. It's 
So how's your day going? Oh wait, I forgot. <laughs> if you're sitting where I'm sitting, you really wouldn't even know there's not a person in the seat in front of you driving. You're here. Please make sure it's clear before exiting and don't forget any items in the trunk. <laughs> Okay, that was a pretty neat experience. I've been in lots of cars where there's a driver. Even without a driver, it felt safe, it was fun. The Waymo handled these streets with ease. It even opened the trunk for me. Pretty neat. In San Francisco, I'm Rich Tamiro, and you are Tech Smart. What, Rich is just a, he's a jet setter. That was very. So would you do it? Rich is just a jet setter. Yeah, if I just went around a, a couple of blocks, I'd get in it just to go a around, the, around the block like Rich the Jet said. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, 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 think, I, think, I think parents should put their kid in there. I do. I do. I think, I think that'll happen. So we just saw autonomous intelligence. Uh, These be, young adults, they will, they are hopping in Ubers left and right. They're not even getting licensed. Did, didn't we read an article? Did you send me an article? Or did we talk about it on the show? How yep. a lot of these kids, these 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 kids, these young adults, these teenagers, they don't they, need it, it. it's taking longer for them to get driver's license because or car or buy cars because they don't feel the need to. They're like, why? It's another expense. Like it's cheaper for them to Uber. Yeah. Uh, uh, autonomous intelligence being developed for the future establishes machines that act on their own. An example is self-driving vehicles, which we just saw, and when they come to and uh, when they come to widespread use, some optimists believe AI could create a world where human abilities are amplified as machines help mankind process, analyze, and evaluate the abundance of data that creates today's world, allowing humans to spend more time engaged in high-level thinking, creativity, and decision-making, right? So let's go here. Um, let's go pull this down a little bit. So this is how they got it. Assistant intelligence is today. Augmented um, intelligence is emerging and autonomous intelligence is the future um emerging and let me blow that up some the fundamental change and this is with aug augmented intelligence the fundamental change in human work human and machines collaborate to make decisions uniquely human traits emotional intelligence creativity persuasion innovation become more valuable so you're looking at uh, emerging and then we hop down here, shaping our own destiny. Let me look them black out a little bit. How they how they got this out? They got it spread out through collectivism versus individualism, integration versus fragmentation, and then business fragmentation. And then this is when they started getting into the the different um, the yellow world, the real world, the red world. Oh, that's awesome. Gotta go back to it. Uh, right here, the red world, and then the uh, the green world, and then the then the blue world. And they went on, and I talked about that last week. And then this is the part I didn't get into last week, right? Because um, they broke down each one of these segments, right? Like who leads all, who leads on 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 the people strategy? Strategy. What does the workforce look like in their organizational challenge? And that's where each one of these uh, green world, red world, blue world is is how they're making that approach there. Um, let me get past that. All right, don't don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. Let me back out of it. All right, so here it says in 2030, real-time reporting of sustainability data is a legal requirement for all companies. 
Most unlisted en entities also want to vo voluntarily produce detailed quarterly data. Here's an extract from an um, from an an imagined organization organize organizations 2030 sustainability report. So everybody have a sustainability report, um, and this is what they're saying. Like, hey, if for example, this is Green Bar Brewery, here's what it would look like, right? Here's what they would look like. Now, one of the things that I also have been hearing is the world running out of water. Drinkable water. Oh, stop doing that. That's what I hear. Well, I well, we know some places are drying up. However, I don't think it's a matter of running out of drinkable water. I think it's getting water to the right places of where people are at. That's what I think. Now, good thing for Colorado, I heard it's been raining out there for a, a whole month. It's the most war rain they've seen. It's just been raining. Um, let's see, individuals, went, okay, what's this one? Let's go up, let's scroll up. The individual response. I have the following skills and attributes, percentage on who agree or strongly disagree. 65% um, technology will improve their job prospects in the future. 74% believe that it's their own responsibility to update their skills rather than relying on their employees. It is your job. They can only do so much and they can only do so much. So here, adaptability came in at 86%. Problem solving came in 85. Collaboration came in at 81. Emotional intelligence came in at 76. Leadership skills came down here at a, at a hot 69. And your STEM skills came down here at 53. And your entrepreneur skills came down here at the bottom. All right. So they're telling you we, we people need to be able to adjust, but I'm going to pull your STEM skills up here with util, utilizing your STEM skills in order to adjust. That's why I'm going to pull them up at. All right. You need those skills. Uh, no regrets organization, conclusion, and then they got an appendix. So let's go to the conclusion. We outlined in this report, um, in this report, four very different models with huge implications for the world of work. Forces, the, the forces shaping these four wor worlds, the impact of mega trends, the automation in particular, cannot be ignored by governments. None of us uh, know with certainty what the world will look like in 2030, but it's very likely that the, that the, that the facets of the world, uh, of the four worlds, will uh, feature in some way and some time. Some sectors and individuals are already displaying elements of the blue and green worlds, and the yellow and red worlds are more radical but less plausible. The organizations and the individuals that understand potential futures with each other might mean for them a plan ahead will be the best, best prepared to succeed, right? Um, and we see this. Uh, the next big thing after um, AI is quantum computing. Um, that is your next big thing there. Again, uh, IBM made a big, big breakthrough with quantum, quantum computing. Um, again, we, we were trying to avoid cracking the encryption, but once they started cracking the encryption, which I heard they already did in China, but they just, nobody wants to talk about it, really. Um, they cracked that encryption. Um, so this is where we're at. But then we have to understand that um, when we see things like this right here, IBM says it's made a break, a big breakthrough in quantum computing, and we know that's coming down the pipe. We just have to make sure we put people in place uh, to, to gather this information, to work in those fields, enable them, enable them and so forth, right? That's my thought process on that. Um I don't want to read that one. 
And I think I went through this before. D, don't you remember going through this? The, the state of tech talent? Um, yes. I went through that already, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. I'm making sure I did. I like. I, I feel like I went through this already. Yes. Right. All right. Let me make sure that's everything. IBM, quantum, future work, life expectancy. That's it, D. That was everything. I think I think I covered everything. But I did want to get that out there on the side of understanding um, where you can be with your technical skills. And also, I'll, I'll probably double back again next week on AI and financing um, and going from there. Let's see, what did you say here? Uh, to be honest, I have been yelling about quantum computing for a decade now. Yeah, I, I talked about quantum. We had a quantum computer uh, engineer on, PhD, uh, to talk about quantum computing and what they see in it. Um, it says, when people ad ad adoption, um, I guess adaptation, it's just artificial. It is doomed to fail in, in the short time. Example, important water to places where that are not supposed to be livable. Yeah. The future is tech, money, and AI, cyber, infrastructure, and quantum would be the part. Yeah. Well, quantum is already a part of everybody's life if you got a, a hybrid or an electric Mercedes. Uh, those batteries are... are, are, are IBM helped with those batteries. Uh, so that's a part of your everyday life. Um, but the other part is, is um, what I am looking at is, and I talked about this yesterday, I'm looking at the new homeless rates that will be created um, from AI and the new homeless rate that will be created from people not having skills. And so our sh there's going to be a shift um in, in inside of that where we're going to see and we see it now more homeless but even more so we're going to probably see more homeless people as well too and and how um ai is predicting that you could be homeless um and so um that's also gonna like i said hurt with your lending and so forth and so on so um uh, be careful of the company you keep be careful what you post on social media. Be careful on how you interact with others. Uh, and also be careful of what you share um, on social media. All right? Um, so just try to forewarn you uh, when it comes to this. Um, those that are looking to be sys admins and you're on the fits, uh, we should have one-on-ones open up this week. Um, don't be on the fence because the fence could eventually get power and it electrocute and fly you on off of it and it may go to a direction you may not want to go in. Uh, so, you know, I'm just telling you all, be proactive. Be, be proactive in your life, all right? Be proactive in your life. Uh, be proactive in what you learn. Don't wait till a company say you need to learn something. F watch the trends. Look at where the market is moving. Look at how the market is moving. What's going on in the market? Be, you know, be mindful of, of those things, right? Be mindful of, of those things. Um, I don't know if people have kept up with SoFi this week. Did you keep up with NVIDIA in the past couple of weeks? Have you been keeping up with AMD and what's going on with AMD, where these new tech centers are being built out at? All right. Just saying, be very mindful of these things. Very mindful of these things. Um, and also, last but not least, inform inform the younger crowd, the children, the uh, the ones underneath um, that are coming up. You saying that your children are a future? You talking to the children? No, I'm just saying inform the younger crowd. Oh, not necessarily the younger crowd. Yeah, but Triple they may, be, but it may be somebody's child. That That's what I'm saying. Triple OG. What do you consider the, the younger generation? 
Anybody that's younger than me? I'm the younger generation. No, you's all. Excuse me? You's all. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Young J. Uh, I don't know about that. Young J. Mm. You know. <laughs> I know what you want to say. <laughs> I know you know. what you're trying to say. I said what I said. Mm -hmm. I said what I, I said. What I, said. Um, uh, I, I know looking, what you're trying to say. I was, I was looking to do probably next week. I, I was trying to, I was trying to do it today, but I didn't get a chance to. Oh, I, I let me, let me take that back. I couldn't find the information. I wanted to pull a prospectus on Apple, Microsoft and all of them and um discuss what's in the prospectus uh and so forth so i'll find a prospectus and we'll we'll break down a prospectus next week this is what we'll do i don't think they ha i i was looking on charles on charles Schwab for a prospectus and i i i couldn't find one i couldn't find one uh, I can find out about, you know, information about the stock, but I couldn't find a prospectus, which is usually the PDF and, you know, they talk about it, but I, it might be too old school. They probably don't have prospectuses anymore. I thought that'd be one thing you have, but yeah, it, it may not, it may not be that, be that anymore. What are the chances any company would take some half baked people as the waterfall of new services keep piling on. Mm, I'm not sure what you mean by that. When you say half baked people, what do you mean? They're not they don't have the mental capacity or they don't have the technical capacity. I'm saying half what what is it? Well, you can learn doctor in a week. Um, Kubernetes, you can sit down and take uh 45 days and learn it um aws is continuous you don't I, I don't think you just learn aws i think you learn over time um yeah you could you people can go from soup to nuts it really depends on the person and their dedication to wanting to know right i think we get caught up with Oh my goodness, it's hard. And then the question becomes is what is hard? Because it's not like you're learning calculus and L'Hopital's rule. Uh, you're not doing triple integrals and derivatives and integration. So what what you're saying is hard is the fact the the person having the ability to read and then somebody uh, teaching them about the breakdown of it. I think it's all in, in the style of teaching and the, and the style of learning. Uh, in fact, we uh, this is happened years ago. We had a challenge where we took uh, some eighth graders and taught them Kubernetes without them being on a command line. So it's a matter of the way you teach and who you're talking to i mean they literally have 50 goes to cop i mean 50 goes to the zoo so it, it is enough for the cloud for cloud native to make it a cartoon for kids to digest so you know they talk about water pods. They talk about uh, uh, Fippy needed storage and some place to store stuff, and you know the replicas. So I mean, if we can break it down to the level where people can understand, I don't see why they wouldn't understand. Um, why they couldn't understand complex projects, right? Complex things. So I think that's 
that's just my personal uh, opinion on it. I think we have a, I think we, I think we have a tendency to give people. I think we have a tendency to look at people in fear first versus in the ability to learn. So when I look at somebody, oh, they ain't going to know this. They ain't going to even try to know this versus if I present it this way, then then it would learn. Yeah, you can retain it. No one retains information without re repetition. repetition. Yeah. And then for me, even sometimes if it's something that I'm not quite grasping and I'm like, sometimes it's just like, I don't, I want to break it down. Like it, it's too many big words when it comes to like how it connects. I go in and I, and I search, like break this concept down to fifth graders. And sometimes you have to do that even for yourself, because I think that's one thing about technology is, is sometimes things are, um, they're too technical when they're, when, and when you really break it down, and drill down on it, it's really a, a, a lot easier concept than it's explained. You know, and I mean, I, I, it, it, it's a job, it's a skill to be able to take those high um, technical concepts and break them down to an end user at the end of the day, or to a different team or to leadership. Because once it goes over their head, and they're not understanding it that that messes with the budget or or the or the project moving forward if if they don't understand it yeah and, and i know I think, you can attest to that yeah and i also think um we got to get out of the habit like i i, I get this all the time online <laughs> tech is hard tech is hard tech is hard we, we can't do tech Everybody can't be in tech. Tech is hard. And you tell somebody to make a three-way phone call on their phone, they can do it. You tell somebody to uh, go transfer some money or send some money via Cash App, they can do it. Um, but we can't. We keep saying tech is hard. And no, people are hard. Tech is easy. Tech is easy. And it's supposed to take time. Repetition is supposed to take time. Someone who knows the top layers without actually knowing how things functions, because uh, yeah. But I think I think I think when when we talk to people, I think you you have to incorporate um, the nuances of it. Like, okay, this is a kernel, but let me show you what makes up a kernel. Okay, here's a driver, but let me show you how you write a driver. Okay, this is this is Linux. This is an operating system. Well, let what makes it an operating system? Um, but the other thing, the other flip side of that is people have to get out of their head that I'm going to do this for four months and I'm going to get a job making 300000 Maybe, maybe not. If you're in sales, tech sales, tech engineering or something, I mean, en sales engineer, maybe. I don't know. That's not my realm. And then, and in our, our actuality, like knowing the top layer is being able to talk the talk. Do you know how many people are functioning? Sales people, sales departments that are just top layer people. And mm -hmm. then they're like, they're going to connect because they are the connectors. They're going to lead you to the water. And then you get on the call with 50, a, a team of 10 people on the phone call. Like mm -hmm. sometimes that's all you need to know is the top layer. Yeah. So everything has its place. And the other thing too is I get I it, I I get I get tired of this right here. <laughs> I don't know why this gets under my skin so bad. I don't know why this gets under my skin so bad. But it does. This one right here. Only 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 10% or 20%, I think it's 10% of black people make $100,000 and blah, 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 whatever, whatever. I get tired of hearing that because the question becomes is, how how many times you going to quote the same stat before you say that stat needs to change? It's kind of like this. Like, to me, this is how I look at it. 
you know, you you'll say, okay, in Chicago, you know, eighty percent of the black boys are dying to gunfire. Do you keep quoting that, or do you go out and change it? Right. So the question becomes: Is what are you going to do to change it? Right? Are you are you are you interested in changing it, or are you just interested in quoting it? Because if you're interested in quoting it, then wh what's the point? Like, I'm interested in changing this that so we can have better health care for ourselves in our own community. We can have more doctors and lawyers in our own community to help protect us. We can have um, we can have better schools in our community and not have to transfer out this that another. We have the ability to have better homeschool options for our children um, than, than others. We have better health care options for aging adults. Uh, we have better options for food when we step out and not be in a food de desert. It's 13 percent. Well, it's actually more than 17 percent now. I don't know what you see with your eyes, because what I see with my eyes, with what I see with my eyes and what you see with your eyes is two different things. I don't know what you see. What do you see? Do you see uh, poverty? Do I mean what? What's your life like every day? Because when, when I when I when I get up and, and go up the street, I see kids playing outside and ain't no bus stop. So you gotta have a car. Uh, when I when I get home, uh, I I probably I probably just see people walking dogs and going on hiking again. Everybody's reality is different, and I think you know, I, D, you and I was talking about this. I think there's there's something to be said by living in the south and then branching out and going on other places. Yeah. You said I see people gating into the population centers and most are not black. I don't know. I I I I I see I see the stats say 56% of the black people live in the southeast. And let's lump Texas into that and call it the south. West. I, what I don't I said south. call it the southwest. I said call lump Texas in that and call it the southwest. That's what I said. That's what that's what the stats say, right? So if you create food deserts in those cities where majority of black people are living, and they have no, they don't have good resources in the area, they eventually move into areas where the resources at. Property value goes down. People buy low. They put the resources back in there, and now you can't even get back into the neighborhood. And and that's across the country. Yeah. You know, I, I have a, a lot of friends that move to the southeast. And then also I have a lot of friends um, that moved out of the city and are in the suburbs. And then they migrate back into the city for work every day, you know, and that's what they do. And again, when you want to come back in because it's convenient now that you're priced out and that happens everywhere. That's happening right in the city that I'm at. And you grow up in a place. And for me, like the ghetto and the hood is like all relative. Like what I know is the ghetto, the hood project is way different than I see in a lot of places in the Southeast. And, you know, I can tell by where people move, like this is, this is Shangri-La. You know, like I didn't realize a lot of people in the city, like we didn't have central heat and air until I moved back to a major city from the South. And I'm like, whoa, well, what did I do before this? But I also, in the South, wonder, I like fresh air. I leave my windows open and things of that nature. Like, it's, it's but it's, it's, it's give and take. They don't bite me. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's give and take. Everything is all relative. And then I also noticed early on that a lot of people that grew up in the South, they go migrate to the coast to go to school. They go to the East Coast. They go to the West Coast to go to school. They go out of the country and vice versa. A lot of people that are in big cities, they go to the South to go to school. So we all are searching for like these different types of experiences based on, you know, 
where we were rooted. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you go back and sometimes you keep it moving. You you keep on pressing to new and better things, you know. So or you just be like, okay, I did it. Now I want I want to I want to go home. Yeah. And then you know, some people like it's home is where the heart is. So okay. yeah, yeah. Uh Stacy G, uh people from the north been moving down here uh since Freak Nick. <laughs> we couldn't get rid of them. Couldn't oh, okay. get rid of them out of Atlanta. Um, so yeah. Um, yes, engineering can be lim limitless, yeah, 500 to 200 million easily, right? Um, but I, but I, again, this goes back to what I say is if, if you, okay, so, um, uh, you say you don't see black people in software, but they are. And so you, you have to be in cities like a DC, like a, and like an Atlanta in order to see those black people. Uh, maybe even in Chicago, but if I go to a place like Montana, where the black people are not at, I'm not going to see those black people. If I go to a place like West Virginia, I might see a sprinkle, maybe, depending on if they stay, but probably not, because it's just not a place where black people have chosen to live. And if they are there, they're in a, a very particular location within West Virginia, right? So it really depends on the city is where you're going to see black people at. And also it depends on what you like as a person and what you're looking for in that particular city. Like for us, like we want to brunch, but we don't like, well, we're well, going to no. look at where we want to brunch and we want to like do city or we might be in a, a little hole in the wall spot because we like that adventure we like to go now if some days we like we're not gonna stick to nothing new we're gonna go where we know and then there's other days like okay well let's get outside and go explore what that means to us and so then you go and you find yourself saying okay i'm searching for a specific experience what type what part of town offers me that experience or is it my town do i have to go somewhere else what does that look like? And you have to be the type of person that wants to go and dig a little bit, you know, and depend. Like, yeah, I, I go look up reviews online, but I also like consider the source. Like, I'm not trusting these taste buds because I'm no. looking at these pictures and it's not tasty. It's not giving tasty delicious. You know, like the experience, it is what you make it. But sometimes you be like, hey, let me go try it out. But yeah, but but to filthy Frank's uh black uh statement is we live in society that I need it now. Okay. Let them lead it, need it now. See, this is I, I think this is another thing that I think like we gotta come to grips with and we just really don't want to. Every, you can't save everybody and everybody can't go. And it's okay. We can't say everybody and everybody can't go. It is a hair that is just in my eye. I mean, it's time to go. Yeah, it does. We can't say everybody and everybody and everybody don't want to go. And those everybody, are, everybody not ready to go. Like, and then and if they not, it just is what it is. It's, it's nothing we can do about that. You know, people are like. You know, we got to say them, we got to do this, and we got to, no, we don't. The information is out there. We put it out there. It's free. Showing you how you can get it free. Showing you how you can get to 100,000, 200,000, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1 million, 2 million. And if you choose, after you seen all this information for free, and you got extra time, like if you got time to go to, to the club, you got time to learn. If you got time to go to brunch, you got time to learn. If you got time to sit on a YouTube panel, you got time to learn. If you got time to go shopping, you got time to learn. That's how I look at it. Either you go get in it or you not. And those that going to get in it and understand they got to get it and they got to work towards it, they going to do it. And those that don't want to work towards it, they going to work for somebody. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to have that's your that's your thing. Like some people are on the maintain. I am good with my 50 and I'm good with my 2% increase every year. I'm not going to do no more than this. 
I'm going to ride this out because I'm a thug. And that's it. They don't want to do nothing else. And then you got some people are like, no, it's 50 this year. It's going to be 75 next year. And then after that, it's going to be 100. And then after that, it's going to be 150. And then you got some people that's like, it's 50 now. And it's going to be 150 next year because I'm about to go get these certs. I'm about to sign up for XYZ boot camp. I'm, I'm about to do X, Y, and Z. I'm going to do my mock interviews. I'm going to redo my resume. I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to put skin in the game. If they tell me no, that's fine. I'll go back and knock on somebody else's door. I'm going to keep knocking till somebody let me in. When they let me in, I'm going to be like, hey, you want to come in? You don't want to go with me over here? They, they, nope. You, you, oh, okay, so you don't want to go. All right, cool. Right. And and we just got to We and, and everybody's like, oh, that's that's being an individualist. And that's just that. Another look at at some point you got to, again, put your mask on first. And then once you put your mask on first, be like, look, check this out. I got my mask on. In fact, I got mask that I can put on. You coming or you not. And that's just where we're at. We can't sit back and be. And I think that's the problem, too. I think we have sat back and been like, well, if I get ahead, I need to go back and get these people so they can get ahead. But I don't want to get too far ahead of them. I can't get too far ahead of them because then we start feeling guilty because we didn't got too far ahead. And then we start feeling guilty because we're looking around and we're like, don't nobody look like us. Right. But then you look back, don't nobody look like you either. And then when you go back to get the people to come so they can, it be other people that can look like you in that area, they dog you. They were like, oh, you trying to be white. Oh, you trying to be this. Oh, you think you better. Oh, you think you, you bougie. No, I just, I just have acquired a new taste and I thought that maybe you would like it or I, I like the experience. I, I like sitting down at brunch and not paying $40 to park and $100 to get in to get something to eat and then a two-hour wait, and then I still ain't paid for my food, so I already done spent $140. Like, I, I like just pulling up to the valet and then sitting down and everybody knows you and they come out with my shrimp and grits and, and we go from there. I like, I, I, I like that. And I like the fact that I can look across the street and there's some a, a, a little beach walk. I could go walk on the beach and they're not trying to try to shoot up the shoot up the beach. I like that. But why why are you mad? Because I want to be, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to be where everybody else is at. I want I I want to I want to have fun too. I don't calls like it's like, <laughs> like, like, I, like I said earlier, like customer experience is everything. Like sometimes you just be like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm not gonna do that today. Like that is not what I want. Like I want to be able to have a conversation across the table. And you know what? Some people back to your, to your car, some people want to make fifty thousand a month. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey. I know I can be frugal, but I do like quality things. Yeah. Like, and there's nothing wrong with that. Nope. But it's just some environments. I'd be like, mm. and then sometimes I want to do a little bit of shit with my friends. And all I'm saying is when it comes down to moving forward, don't be afraid to move forward. And don't be afraid if you leave your friends behind. I, I, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Because sometimes your friends don't want to go. And so you're supposed to sacrifice your opportunities because they don't want to go. You're supposed to sacrifice having the potential to create wealth for yourself because they don't want to go. Like, make that make sense. No, I'm going to stay here with you. We're going to stay in this one bedroom, you and I. I'm not going to take that job that's going to take me to the next level. I'm going to be here with you. And then, you know, maybe you'll find something 
you know, I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll figure out a new opportunity for myself. Will keep me here with you? Like, that don't make sense. Like, why we... Why we got? Why 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 does that have to be the the only option? Why is that the only option? Like that don't make sense to me. Yo, check this out. I'm about to go to Bali. I'm about to do a little work over there. Uh, I'm about to sign up for to work on a cruise ship as a, as a DevSecOps engineer. Um, it's gonna take me around the world. Um, I'm gonna call this my base right here, um, and then I'll be back. Like. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, engineering cannabis says, let us be in a place where a company start asking us 300K salary is enough. Yeah. Right. Like, how how are you feeling about uh, is 300K going to be enough for you? Hey, um, again, I showed you earlier the companies that pay 25% automatically into your 401k companies that pay 10% automatically into your 401k and you do absolutely nothing but breathe and show up to work and they automatically put into your 401k and you know what people will say that ain't real don't nobody do that she lying ain't nobody don't know don't no company out there do nothing like that 8% of the black people only make a hundred thousand dollars. Hey, don't nobody do that. Don't nobody. And it's my favorite raw. This is my favorite one right here. If you make five hundred thousand dollars in tech, you gotta be a tech executive. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. I go to levels FYI now and show you that some of them folks on there ain't even tech executives. Some of them got total comp 500. Some of them got base of 350. Some got a bonus of 150. Some got a bonus. Someone got a base of 400. Somebody got stock options for 150. Somebody got a sign on bonus. It's all different ways how that 500,000 can come up as 500,000. But you know what? Because you black. There's no way you can make five hundred thousand. Don't nobody pay you that kind of money. Just cause you black and the way you look, ain't nobody paying you that. That's that what that's us. what we that's what we believe, right? That ain't for us. That ain't for us. That's what we believe. No, not you. I'm 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 cool with you, filthy Frank. At least I'm on something else. Yeah. It is amazing. It is actually absolutely amazing. The the amount of oh my god, you make a hundred thousand dollars, man. I, that I don't like. They like it. They don't even make sense to me. And maybe I'm jaded, and maybe I'm confused, and maybe I just think that you can go out here and with the right skill set, with the right network. You can make the money out here, but maybe I'm jaded. Maybe I should stop reading. <laughs> maybe I don't know. And they said, Let me clarify. I would love to have a company ask me, Do I want to make six figures? What you mean you would love a company to ask you, Do you want to make six figures? I don't see, I don't understand that when you say that. That don't make sense to me. When you say that, that don't make sense to me. Like, it literally doesn't make sense to me. Literally, I've been on this internet for two years talking about exactly how you can make six figures in tech through infrastructure, literally. I have, I've been doing meetups for six years. I have shown my, my, my journey in tech from 49,000 to, uh, uh, 80, 50, 80, uh, 115, 132, 300, and up. I literally have shown that. And then we still get up here and we be like, ain't no way we can get six figures. Showed you the skill sets. I'm telling you the skill sets. 
Everybody who has been to my meetup, like I don't have no reason to lie to you. And what's so disheartening about it is what's what, like really what like drives like a fork in my heart and then you just like turn it, just keep turning it, is that we don't even believe it for ourselves. Like we don't even believe in our own self and our own abilities. In our own ability to learn anything, like we don't even believe it in ourselves. Like you can't, you like, like it, it, it is, it is uncanny and unfathomed to me that we can't even look and look and say, I have the skill sets, I've done the work, I've done the education. I'm going to submit my resume. I'm going to do this interview. They're going to ask me what I want, and I'm going to say, I just want forty five thousand. Nah, man. Nah, I ain't even believing it. Nah. No. You, off, off the rip, the jobs I'm telling you to go after, at a minimum of 120, on a bad day. <laughs> on a bad day. On a bad day, they are a minimum of 120. At a minimum. Now start adding in other skill sets, staff, senior principal, they may be 150, they may be 240, they, they may be something else. Just had a petty guy on, on, on Wednesday night talking about going after a job and that job is going to pay him in the upper six figures. It's possibly could pay him up to 200. He ain't even graduated from college yet. Like, man. Uh, yeah, you wrong. Let me tell you how, let me go over my, my how I got started. Got started. I, start, I started teaching Linux myself. Once I started teaching my Linux myself, I was like, man, I wonder if I, wonder if I could get a job in Linux. Well, I, I, so I started looking around and I started doing interviews in Linux. Then I went from doing the interviews, then I got an internship. I got an internship doing Linux, which helped me get my clearance. Once I got my clearance and, and, and so forth, I was like, man, I was like, what else can you do in, in this? What what what's, what what else do they need? And then I started picking up skills. Then I went from an internship to a full-time job uh, making 49000 And then I was like, well, well, okay, well, that's cool. I want to go somewhere else. I'm like, I, 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 I don't want to be here. Let me get up out of here. So I left, moved to Texas. I'm like, I took in a job. I'm like, man, this is cool, but I, don't, I ain't really feeling this because I was supposed to be doing something else. I ain't feeling this. So I left that job, went to another job. Got another job paying uh, about, about $15,000 more. Then I found out my coworker was getting paid, was on his way to get 95. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm, I'm getting paid at least like forty forty thousand to fifty thousand dollars less than you. Then I was like, "Yo, check it out. I, I ain't with that. I'm finna. I'm I'm jumping ship. Jump ship. They came to me at the last minute. It was like, "Yo, we we can keep you here. We can give you the money. You know what? The white lady told me she's like, I can't pay you that." And then the guy who was the manager who was over the project, who was the customer, was like, we could pay her that. He was like, why you didn't come to me? I was like, because she told me no. He was like, don't ever go to her. She can't write the checks. I write the checks. And we can give you that. If that is that all you need? Do you want more? And I was like, this is my last day. I can't turn my back on those folks now. And he was like, I understand that. And I left. And then when I left there, I went to DC. Went to DC, got 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 a sign. Got a. I, I told them they was gonna give me a sign up bonus. I said keep it, make it my salary. Moved to DC with clothes. Then once I got there with clothes, making over a hundred thousand, I went down to Florida. Left left and went to Florida. Went to Florida. I was like, yo, I need some. I need for you to pay my. I need for you to pay for my school because I'm going to grad school and it's free. It's like, all right, 
$20,000 for your grad school. All right. And I still need to move $20,000 for you to move. All right. And I still need my salary. No problem. We got your salary. Oh, what else you need? Well, you know, I, I need to make sure that, you know, I have continuous education. We got you on your continuous education. I'm well over 100 at that time, well over 100, right? So when I see, when I hear, like, we can't make it, and it, and, 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 and let's keep in mind, I, I failed out of college. I failed out of college partying in Atlanta. 1.3, 1.6 GPA, went back, was scared of the computer, didn't even know, like, what a screensaver was, turned it around, figured it out, bounced me like, yo, when I get back in this, ain't nobody going to never tell me nothing about a computer. Ain't, no, ain't nobody going to never tell me no. And then we sit on the sideline and I see it all the time. I can't do this. I can't do that. Ain't nobody never gave me nothing. Ain't nobody never showed me nothing. And it's shit out here for free and we still won't do it. We still won't do it. I could, I could, I could, I could, I could, I could, I literally, literally, what I think I gave away $5,000 last year, D. I think I gave away $5,000. I bought, I bought people laptops. About people computer classes, about people certifications, about people just different things out of my own pocket. Out of my that's out of my own pocket. That ain't out of women in lineage. That's out of my own pocket. Cause I want to see you win. But if you don't want to win for yourself and you don't want to do it for yourself, what you come for? What you want to get in the tech for? Don't waste everybody's time. If you don't have no confidence in yourself and you can't see yourself doing it, what you here for? It don't make no sense. It's money out here. We already going to be automated out of jobs. Well, I'm not. I ain't going to be automated out of jobs. I'm going to automate you, but I ain't going to automate myself. I ain't going to. That's not going to happen. But at the same token, it's money out here to be made. It's, it's problems to be solved. And either we're going to solve them or we're going to sit on the sideline and let somebody else solve them. Or we, you better learn how to read. If you don't know how to read now, you better learn how to read. If you don't know what Linux is, go learn it. If you, don't, if you never play with Windows, go play with them. If you don't know what a container is, go play with a container. If you have no idea where you want to go in tech, set up a one-on-one. Do a consultation. Do a research. If you got money to go back to school, go back to school. Accenture just released uh, a program to train one million people in cybersecurity. Uh, IBM had the same thing with IBM Skills Build. Google had the same thing. They got free classes in AI. They got free classes in machine learning. They got free classes in cybersecurity. They got free classes in just every single thing. And you want to sit up here and say you can't make six figures. I just gave you six figures worth of information right there for free and, and a way to make six figures out of all those things. I'm saying, at the end of the day, either you going to sink or swim or you going to be worm food. What you going to do? You want to be worm food? That's fine. You want people to roll over you? That's fine. I make sure I send the robot out there, scoop you up, take you to the field, dig up a little hole, put you in there. I can't hear you, D. And Filthy Frank, I swear. You come over here, and I know you got plenty sense, but you be talking like you be off the grid and your house got foil windows. <laughs> I know you know too much to be in the entry level anything. <laughs> you better cut that out. Yes, redhead is, is a good start. Redhead is a good start. My man ran is over. No, it ain't. Yes, it is. Whew, no, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah. It's never over. Just it just restarts at a later time. Nah. Nah. At the end of the day, you one skill away from 200K. I go offline and get me a select. My stomach is right. And if you don't want 200K, if you want more, it's out there. There are black people in tech that look like you and I who are uh, from Atlanta and they make millions in tech. There are black people in tech that live in Seattle that make millions. 
there are black people in tech that live in North Carolina and make millions. There are some in Texas that make millions. And when I say they make millions, I'm not talking about they own a company and they built out their customer and they scale. No, no, no. I'm talking about W-2 million. Working, working <laughs> people. Good old working people. Right. I'm talking about people that get up every day, clock in, do their work, they talk, they speak at conference, they do whatever, whatever, and they doing it. I know them. We have conversations. We have people in tech that own multiple land, that own properties, they own hotels, they own whatever. Some married, some single. Yeah. Some with kids, some without kids. All different backgrounds. But we can't keep looking coming like here. us, not looking like us. We just, in. you can't keep coming here and saying that we can't. Even get some it. of their kids is killing us. Like, yeah, yeah, we can't. We <laughs> can't. Like children, you'd be like, say that again. <laughs> yeah, we can't keep coming here every week and being like, I'm black, and because I'm black. I can't make a hundred thousand, and because I can't make a hundred thousand, I'm just gonna take what they gonna give me. I'm just gonna take whatever, whatever he said, whatever them, whatever masters say they gonna do. They go, that's what they gonna do. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get here. I thought your man rap was over. I'm gonna get here and do it. <sighs> What'd you say, master? We sick, boss. <laughs> <laughs> so my ask is, women in Linux, we are 5013C. All that is information is brought to you by us. And in order to keep going and delivering, hey, we need your help. So make sure you guys go and support women in Linux. I'm going to go ahead and put that link in the chat um, so that you guys can have it. Um, set yourself up on a monthly payment schedule. It don't have to be a month. Five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen dollars. Pay your tech ties. Listen. Pay your tech ties. W two million is okay. I like how that's out. Yeah. Sir Octavius of Williamsburg, you already know what it is. I gave y'all the blueprint. If y'all don't follow through. That's not on me. I'm showing you how to do it, and we got to do it. It is. And this is the thing, right? <laughs> this is name, like, I'm literally giving you an alley-oop. <laughs> 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 I'm literally giving you a I can't. I can't. I'm literally giving you a alley -oop. You will not. You ain't on mute either. I know. <laughs> literally giving you a alley -oop. Get in the game. That's all I'm saying. Get in the game. Sit on the sideline or get in the game. But here's what I'm telling you. If you're not going to get in the game and you're going to sit on the sideline, Leave everybody else the hell alone and let them work. Expand your friend group. Let them work. Let them people go make a million. Let them people go make 500000 Let them go make 300000 Don't be mad because they over there making money. Don't get mad because somebody might be overemployed and they may be pulling out 700000 Don't get mad at them, son. Don't be mad at them, son. Let them work. Let them work. Let them work. Check my foot work. <laughs> you ain't got these. Man, rent over. We back. We'll see y'all next week. Um, Tay. I'm just saying. I'm eating watermelon. So delicious.
That's what I mean. Do you got anything before we get out of here? Hey, you know what I say. Do something different. Do the opposite. That, that, ain't, what, that, ain't, that ain't what you say. What I say? You said you want can I say it? Uh, what did I say? Can Tell I say me. It? Yes, I want to hear it. Can I curse? Well, you've been cursing the whole show. Fuck them and feed them fish. That's what she said. <laughs> I knew she was going to say it. I knew she was going to say it. I knew it. What would you say? I mean, it's like, what, what are you going to do? I mean, we I had the whole talk with engineering cannabis. Like, buddy, he already... That stuff is exhausting. Like, it ain't their time. It's okay. Move them right along. When they ready, they're going to come plant your seeds. Plant your seeds. They will harvest, even for yourself. Plant your seeds. Engineering Cannabis, when I, um, when I'm going to come on your, uh, he got a YouTube channel now. When I'm going to, when I'm going to make, when I'm going to get an invite. I heard you on Before the Billions yesterday. I left a comment. It got deleted. <laughs> I be messing up folks' money to make them. No, I, I, I little le, legitimately left a good comment. The you comment thought it was good. No, listen. The comment was in reference to when you go to tech conferences, you don't really learn. You don't really, you don't really get a lot at tech conferences. And the tech conferences that were mentioned, like you don't really get a job at a tech conference. You got to work to build relationships. And over time, it might turn into a job. And I said, well, those are the wrong conferences to go to, one, for jobs. And I was like, places to go, conferences to go to are like the Red Hat. Or a the link. Delete. Why would you delete? If I'm selling classes and courses and I said what I said, nobody wants to hear you and your business. He's not selling classes and courses. He's not delete. He's not selling classes and courses. He's not selling classes and courses. I don't care. He gearing up to sell something. Delete. You just evil. Again, it's misinformation. Delete. It's misinformation. Like I said. I don't know why you get it. Like, okay. You can go to a tech conference and get a job. Get it out anyway. The reason why is because people have job boards at those conferences and they put their information up there and they tell you and they tell you uh, about um they tell you about the actual information, right? What the job is. And then they may have a interview on the spot. They, they'll do an interview on the spot. So when they do the interview on the spot, you could potentially be getting the job. So, you know, again, that's what happens. But you let these uh, haters out here that's next to me. Yes, well, what thing you going to say about me? Because I'm never no hater. Ah! The biggest one ever. Got to put you in the background. I can feel this. I can, I can feel the rays of hate coming through the screen. Well, I hope y'all had fun today. Again, get out here and get, get these skills and get this money. Don't be on the sideline. Until then. We out, bitches. What? She cursed. Oh, my goodness. I'm leaving the studio. Billy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>